Referral <laughs> Council, the time is 7.30 p.m. Mr. Metric, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Weisberg, I'm here. <coughs> Ms. Rickards? Here. Mr. Anopoulos? Here. Mr. Nixon? Here. Mr. McGreevy? Here. Ms. Kevlin Moffitt? Present. Mayor Andrea Deutsch? Here. Mr. President Muterick? Here. Um, in terms of comments, I'm, I'm going to solicit from Council a couple uh, agenda amendments, and we can we can talk those out. One is a request um, coming uh, to discuss the Planning <coughs> Commission uh, letter that came through, uh, so that we don't have to wait two weeks to sort of get back to <coughs> or just sort of see where we stand with it. I don't know if anyone has the time to look at it. Because just came through. Which today? Yeah. Today, I haven't time. seen it. To look at it, so sorry it about that. It came two hours ago. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I'd just like to <coughs> move that we amend the agenda to include that item. And we'll see how far we go with our conversation. Yeah. Okay. So, could we we'll move? Will someone second? Sure. Okay. Uh, we'll put that in. in uh, sorry, Jenny. All right. Well, it's a this is all be fun. We'll put that in. Uh, <laughs> I get that from daycare. Between day. four and five. Okay. Yes. So we'll get it out of the way. Um, the second is an opportunity for our borough manager to discuss uh, the situation with the Narberth Avenue Bridge. Um, and I'd like to put that after we discuss the Planning Commission. Sure. Okay. Someone wants to make a motion. I'll make a motion to add. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. So Wait, we'll throw the bridge. <laughs> Um, and my last comment, is, uh, well, no, for my, uh, we would like, to, I'd like to meet in executive session following this meeting um, to discuss personnel matter. And then the last piece is whether uh, council has had an opportunity to review the list of projects and prioritization and discuss that in any manner uh, this evening. So we want to move yeah. that along. I, I have just, not. Uh, I have not. I apologize. So if I okay. looked at it tonight, like I could attach. So let's move that to two weeks. Thank you. And Thank you. We'll have a we'll Thank you. Okay. So we should, should we all show up with like our, what, like a ranking idea of what we think? I think that would be a good idea. Based on the three pages attached to this agenda? Yeah. So we're all walking with the same thing? Yeah. I'll stop now. Okay. Are, we, are we still using the language of large, medium, yeah. and small? Go ahead and clarify. Yeah, the, those three things, <clears throat> those three pages are the, they live in the information folders and the committee folders. It's things that I've talked about with the committee chair people as ideas incubating in committees. And large, medium, small, yeah, that's about as far as I got in terms of trying to scale mm -hmm. the projects. And um, mm -hmm. I did review them again today to make sure I wasn't missing something. But again, that's just one person's um, view of it. So please look for it for additions, subtractions. And, uh, prioritization. Were, were there other projects that were outside the scope of these three buckets that are not included here that were on the menu list? Everything no. that's come in yeah. to this yeah. list. But we, but we could still add it to it. In your case. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a, a question? Yes. Would you mind if, if can we, and I guess this is a question to uh, the president and manager, if when we're going through this we see something and we think, I have no idea what that is, can we make time to like I'll wait until I look right. at the whole thing, so I don't come to you right. like ten times. Right. But can we like maybe try and do blocks of time, just to go over right. what things are if we don't know what they are? I think okay. yes, and if we could do it before the meeting. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like no, no, between now and two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Right. So if we could coordinate some time. Right. What the right. task is? I'm yeah. To, I'm Thank to look you. at this I, and, I, and everyone I, to sort of get a sense of where they want their priorities to be in terms of large, mm -hmm. large and small projects. Um, for the office to move forward so that they can get clear orders of what they should be doing or, you know what is what comes first because they can't all be sort of happening at once what so we should rank the priority task? yeah I what think, is the specific task I, I think the I, specific task yeah, is for you to internally individually rank your priorities for these categories even if you are not in this committee okay. so that we as council can come to a consensus about what rises to the top. So, right. so let's we all agree on a, on a common nomenclature. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. so <laughs> we're actually we're going together. Yeah. So, right. so do, yeah. yeah. So, so it looks like there's like maybe 30 items here or 50 items. Should we number them one through 50? I think you could number them one through five. 
like give each one a score? And I think you can Wait, realistically. Are we ranking each one on a like a so, score? Are we so just gets a one top five? Gets a <laughs> we one all do it the five. same. Right, yeah, just, yeah, I, I think, think this is valuable. I think realistically, if you if you no, just I think rank important. them one to five, one being like the most urgent, and five right. being that you could live with this okay. uh, extremely right. low priority. Thank you, John. We, we are absolutely going to have many common themes. Yeah. We're absolutely going to come to the table right. where there is a cluster of items that are all sort of at the top. But then once we sort of washed away the chef, we can right. then have a discussion of those items. Right. One is the lowest priority, five is the highest priority. No. no. One is yeah. the highest priority. One is the highest and five is the lowest. Yeah. And in theory, you could put all one. You could if but, you wanted but you to, but it wouldn't don't. be helpful. But yeah. we don't, so my point is we don't want to, we don't want to set any boundaries on Michelle, we needed you at last night's that. meeting. <laughs> we, had, we had people who didn't oh, understand no, the entire system for like four hours. I was like, okay. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't be, we can't really be deliberating. Um, it's not like, deliberating. Right? Absolutely, it's deliberate. It's deliberate. Just entering in an Excel sheet. Right, because I'm logging in and I'm seeing That's what right. you're doing. And yeah. I'm seeing okay, can I, can I, can I butt yourself for right, your idea, Cindy? What if like we all... Thank you. Yeah, I, thank you. Um, I get smacked for that language at home, but what if what if we all ranked it privately and sent the ranking to Sean, and then Sean brought the combined ranking to tech council, Ooh. so we didn't waste time, Ooh. not the waste time, we don't burn hours, like if we all think it's a one, I'm, I'm it's a one. That. Yeah. That's what yeah. we will do. Okay, there you are. But then, can but I take it one step further? And if I go too far, please tell me. Yep. Then could we, then if we really want to do this in a uniform way to save time, maybe we could, so we, we got to give everything on this list a one to five. We need, could we get the Excel spreadsheet from Sean in an email and then a date by which we should get it to Sean so we don't give it to him like five minutes before the meeting? Yes, that would be great. Okay. Sure. Is that okay? It's okay. Because I think what you said, Bob, is just we need, like, you, yeah, like we, we need to all be working with the exact same criteria. Like, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but the same framework, right? Right. right. So, it, it, I'm just thinking of the timing. Is it better to add items now before we enter into this ranking? For example, okay. climate action plan, or do we just want to wait? Why don't we do that now? Okay. Because we do need to reach a point where we just. Yeah, have a list we'd of have to go. Right. We've done right, this right. a couple times. Okay, well, I would like to add climate bus, action but... plan to the list. I don't know where it would fit. EAC is reporting to infrastructure. Sure, let's put it under infrastructure. And this is, we don't have to all, because you're someone's going to send us the same spreadsheet. Yes. Otherwise, so we don't send him seven different, or five, Correct. seven different lists. So yep. as long as Sean gets it, we'll all get it. Anyone have anything else they'd like to add? Well, I just think it's important for us to then work with, you know, I want to continue to read and reflect and analyze the comprehensive plan because this should inform the projects and the priorities. May or may not because that document has not been accepted by this body. Well, at that's this what time. I mean. I mean, the timing of it is, I think, well, there's something to consider. Can I offer a compromise? Sure. Because I think that you're right. I just also, I think there's two interests. Like, we, we don't want to make this the list that's going to determine the next 10 years because this is going to change frequently. And yeah, it could change. I don't, I don't, it might change based on, on the comp plan. Mm. But at the same time, we're operating without any kind of ranking. And there seems to be a desire, and I'm included in this, to, to get a ranking. So what if we just started trying to create a ranking with the accepted understanding that at any time, this can be changed and added to because it's going to be a living, breathing document mm -hmm. that we're going to, that at any time the council wants to, we're going to change it. We're, this is just a starting point. Yeah, we're on my way out of line. No, you're, you're, you're in line. The, this list is not going to define an order that is followed over the next five years. It's defined what they're going to be focusing on right now and mm -hmm. probably what is queuing up to be focused on, on deck, what's next. Yeah, sure. That's about as far as it goes. And because this is a dynamic community, when something, mm -hmm. you know, large projects come out at the end of this, three months, six months, <clears> nine <throat> months later, we're going to reevaluate what else goes in. Um, and I think it is, it, obviously, the comp plan speaks to the direction that we're going, where we're spending money. But, um, you know, we, we can't do, we can't kind of do it all at once. We just have to, we have to give the office a direction of what we want them to prioritize and we need to get it done. So this is just like a beta, like we're going to do start this and see where it takes us? Yeah. That's my hope. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mark, what's the date in which we would have, like to have the city office, please? Well, Sean's going to oh, send Mr. us Manning, an email with, with a, a template that we'll all use. So free pass for you, sir. A rank. Enjoy. But this isn't, this, I mean, this isn't a big, it's basically just emailing us this in the Excel form yes, with, the, with a date Absolutely. and a, a thing that reminds us it's one to five. Got it. Yes. Okay. Thank you all. Hopefully we'll be able to make something of it and move it forward. Uh, okay. Going back to our agenda, uh, Ms. Mayor, do you have some comments? Uh, so the only comments I have, um, it's, a, it's a very brief report. We're going to get more from Sean Metric on the update of the bridge. Uh, I just wanted to remind folks, please not walk in the center of the road uh, as a way to cross from the south side to the north side. That's a very dangerous thing to do. Please go under the tunnel that's under the train tracks to get from one side to the other. Uh, I understand people, there's folks on, on wheels with strollers who, who, who may have difficulty with that and know that we are working as quickly as possible to come up with a solution uh, to this issue. We are waiting on some reports and, and Mr. Metric will, will update us, uh, but we're, we're working as fast as we can. But please do not walk in the center of the road. Thank you. Thanks. All right, let's talk about the letter from the Planning Commission. Uh, everyone received it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can someone give me a nutshell? Because I haven't okay. even looked at it. Sean, can you yeah. give us the no? nutshell? No, no, no. I got it at Bob. 3 o'clock. Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, Mr. Gressy's on his way. <laughs> okay, I just want to read. Why don't we wait until Mr. Gressy gets there? I can make a motion that we reorganize, you know, that we move this item until after the committee. Let's just, I'll just, tell me how long it is. Let's talk about the bridge. Okay. Good. Mr. Metric, <laughs> bring us up to speed on the bridge. All right, well, I'm going to take a minute or two just to set the table. The Narvith Avenue Bridge has been with us since 1902. It's an orphan bridge. We didn't build it. <clears throat> and at some point in the distant past, um, the municipality and, and, and others like it inherited these bridges when the uh, railroad changed ownership. So it became Narvith's Bridge, Narvith's responsibility. We own the bridge. It's our bridge. So when anything goes wrong with the bridge, it's our responsibility to repair it, fix it, keep it in good order and uh, provide for its future. Well, we know, we've come to learn, and it's been a long process, I think, that probably goes back to at least the mid-90s, mm -hmm. that this bridge has been continuing to deteriorate. Its, its um, inspection scores have continued to go down and down and down. And we've had to deal with uh, this piece of infrastructure that uh, we know is beyond its lifespan and needs to be replaced. So persons that came before me and, every, and I believe everyone at the table set wheels in motion to have the bridge replaced. And that process is uh, slowly and methodically um, and deliberately moving to completion. We should have our final design and engineering plans done, submitted to PennDOT by the end of this year. That's the schedule that our project manager from Pannoni has given us that's our expectation of what's going to happen and that's everyone's um, duty myself as the chief administrative officer and and us as elected officials to make sure that we we get that cooperation and, and this project remains on the rails no pun intended to being completed and replaced that's the long-term solution um, currently there is dollars in the Pennsylvania <coughs> transportation improvement program that's a 12-year program of, uh, that allocates dollars over the short, mid, and long term in the region for all improvements. And Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission um, is the body that allocates those dollars, prioritizes what projects get done and what order they get done in. And in fiscal year 2019, they run on calendar years, correct, Matt? It's calendar year? <coughs> I believe fiscal. Fiscal, okay. FY 2019. Um, there's right-of-way dollars to acquire those slivers of land that we're going to need to build the final bridge because the bridge is actually the abutments that hold up either end of the bridge are going to get a little bit bigger than they are today. And then there's dollars in fiscal year 2020 <coughs> for the construction, a total of $9.5 million. So I want to make two points very absolutely clear here. We have a major public safety issue on this bridge continues to deteriorate, its, its capacity load continues to degrade over time. It's a liability and it's not a safe structure for anyone in this town to really 
to have to worry about. And I take that very, very seriously. And we need to make sure this schedule stays on track because we need to make sure nothing um, bad happens. And this bridge gets inspected regularly, gets inspected every, every six months now. It's continually scored a level one in most of its structural categories. If you get a zero, you have to close the thing. If we got a zero on one of these inspection ports, it wouldn't be the first time we had to close the bridge. If anyone can remember, I'm sure there's many people here, some people are on council. 2011, we had to close the bridge, and for many months the bridge remained closed. Not only to pedestrians, but to vehicular traffic. And this borough had to invest $211,000 out of its own pocket to put steel on that mm -hmm. bridge. And I can show you the drawings of how horrible the, the steel structure was under that bridge at that time. You don't have to be a structural engineer to know how bad of a situation it is and was. But this council had to make that decision, made that investment to get the bridge on life support to last a little bit longer. Well, here we are eight, eight years later. And we're not at the finish line yet. So I'm going to make sure we get to that finish line in good time. So that's the big picture. I'm a little frustrated with the big picture, but that's the big picture that we all need to stay committed to and understand that the long-term solution here is replacement of the bridge. It is a smooth, smooth surface with sidewalks on both sides. It's something that's going to last for generations to come, and it'll be another hundred years before someone has to do anything about it in the future. So in the process of <clears throat> the bridge getting inspected on this regular cycle, we got a letter February 26 from Pickering Courts and Summerson. That's the contractor to PennDOT that inspects these bridges. I'll, I'll um, paraphrase what was in the bridge. Uh, there, are, there are portions of the bridge that are falling off onto the tracks below. The borough is going to have to spend dollars I don't know how much dollars yet to install vertical shielding to capture anything that could fall upon the tracks below. There are four tracks below the Narberth Avenue Bridge that carry tens of thousands of passengers on them, high speed, and there's pieces of the bridge falling off down below. We have to do something about this. And we were given this letter and told to submit a plan within seven days about what we were going to do within six months to install a structure that would arrest any, any, any items that could fall off the bridge. And we've, we've got that ball rolling. Our engineer got back to us. We've got the ball rolling. We know who we need to talk to at Amtrak <clears throat> to get um, permission to work in the, in the zone. We know what we need to do. We don't know what it's going to cost yet. So I'm telling you, we're going to be on the hook for it 100%. It's not going to be cheap. Depends on your definition of cheap. <clears throat> It'll be a hell of a lot cheaper than if a yeah. piece of concrete fell on an Amtrak train going 60 miles an hour. So we're kind of we're kind of in a tough spot here. On the same day, we got a, an email from a resident. Um, actually, it was the following day, uh, February 27th. The resident just happens to be a structural engineer. Yesterday, I walked across the bridge over the railroad tracks on Narberth Avenue at Elmwood and noticed movement in one localized section. This was on a pedestrian walkway that is still open for use. The amount of movement seemed excessive for just my, my weight. I'm concerned the walkway is unsafe and could collapse. So when I get an email like that, I take it very seriously because I know, I know what we got out there, right? So, I, so our director of public works went out, investigated, verified that in fact there was movement in that section of the bridge. So I made a unilateral decision to close the sidewalks. I don't want, wouldn't send my own sons to walk across that bridge. I wouldn't send anybody in this town, their mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters across that bridge either. So we closed it. So we have been, <coughs> excuse me, going forward with next steps. Um, we spoke to the, uh, our project manager at Pannoni, Jen Regal. And she's going to have an inspection uh, performed on the sidewalk areas. It's going to be done before Friday. And I'll share with everyone on council the findings of that inspection as soon as I know more. We might get we might get a good health inspection. Hey, you've got a, you've got a couple squishy boards. You need to replace them. Fine, you can open up back the sidewalk back up. We might get a report that says you have to do a significant concrete, steel, and woodwork reopen your sidewalks and it's going to cost me think this much money that's a more complex problem 
and the and the sidewalks are just going to have to remain closed for a longer period of time, and we won't know how long until we get to that point. The one, I guess, good thing I get about doing emergency work, you don't have to go through the lengthy bid process. You can just go out and make a few phone calls, get the low bidder, get it done. You don't have to advertise it in a newspaper, select the lowest bidder, and go mm -hmm. through all that process. You can get it done in an emergency fashion, and this would qualify. But again, it could be on our dime, 100%. So I, we were percolating with some possibilities, and I read a lot of information was coming from the public, from members of council, from the mayor, thank you, about some other ideas about um, keeping the cartway open. That's where the cars go across the bridge. It's 20 and a half feet wide and restricting it to one-way traffic and putting a um, pedestrian way on the bridge. And the traffic engineer who I spoke to said that might be a feasible, low-cost solution. But they can't make that determination until they have good traffic counts. So I authorized the traffic engineer to uh, work with Pannoni and use their information they've already, calcu already calculated and or uh, collect the information directly on site if need be. And I authorized that yesterday. So we should have a time frame for our traffic engineer is going to be working on the same solution in parallel. The traffic engineer is going to be concentrating on the on-bridge one-way solution. Our borough engineer is going to be concentrating on the repair of the sidewalk uh, um, solution. And the third thing that we have to do is going to be the uh, installment of the vertical shielding, which I led off the, the uh, presentation with. Um, that's where we stand as of right now. I'll have more information after the, I think the next um, bit of information is going to come after the borough engineer has, has looked at the site and we can get a quick get a quick feedback from from them about how things how things went if there's going to be significant repairs um, specified in that we will get that um, either immediately or we might have to get that with a more close-up inspection of the understructure of the bridge which means we got to go back to Amtrak to get permission to enter on the tracks to get really really close to the steel that's underneath. The inspection that's going to be done on Friday is going to be done on locations not on Amtrak property but with binoculars. They're going to remove boards from the sidewalk and peer down into it and with, with cameras and and uh, and equipment to, to inspect it. But they may, they may need to get back under the bridge to do more inspection. And I will know more when I know more. So for the time being, um, I understand it's a major inconvenience and um, we want to, I think the common ground is that the, the decisions we're making are we, we do want to see bike and pedestrian and vehicular access restored in a safe manner over the bridge. We want to find the solution that's the safest, quickest, least cost alternative, and we're going to weigh those options. And this council will have a pretty big decision to make, I think, in the next you know four weeks regarding what we do next. So that's where we're at. I have a question. Question. Yeah. Let's start yeah. here. We'll go around. Um, is there any aside from inconveniencing cars? Is there any disadvantage to being overly cautious and just closing the bridge to vehicular traffic at this time till we have go through all these expect inspections? I mean, I would much prefer yeah. us all take the heat of people not being able to drive over than God forbid one of us getting a phone call that somebody went through or somebody something fell on the name track. Or the date of the last Or somebody on the tracks decided I just I can't need up. I can't shut it down. Nope. I'm oh, oh. Oh, you're right. I hear you. When was the date of the last inspection? <laughs> they haven't they didn't do their very <laughs> thorough hands on inspection that they had scheduled for last August, but that, mm -hmm. that thorough inspection is still coming. Uh, soon this inspection that I talked about that happened last week was a was a quick inspection. It's the inspector on the rails looking up from the underneath of the tracks mm -hmm. and not getting up and pulling it into it. Mm -hmm. So it's forthcoming. We could look at the um, um, 2017 report, and that's it, it didn't get any better since then. That's <laughs> not <laughs> right. Didn't heal. Did you, did you, you get an expert, expert report? Uh, okay, okay. Go, okay. go to Bob. Um, I just want to echo Cindy's concern that you agree with her that maybe out of an abundance of caution, mm -hmm. we take under consideration the possibility of closing closing the bridge entirely um, until we know have better information because I, I think the alternative is really not acceptable 
of if there's something does happen. My question is, can you define what vertical shielding is? And also, is that is that is that different than say those um, some kind yes. of apparatus that catches nets that yeah. catch debris? Or yeah, is that that's, that's what it is. So it's horizontal, but they call it vertical. Yeah. It's ver okay. <laughs> that's what I'm from. Shields yeah. falling. I was just thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, do, do we have a start date for the replacement or not yet? Is it? Um, the expectation is that by the end of this year in January 2020, that the final plans will be finished, go to PennDOT, they get approved, and that the project would be let in the first quarter, which means out to bid in the first quarter of 2020. The bid process, I believe, takes 60 or 90 days, I think 60 days. And you'd have a notice to proceed at that point, and then there's a mobilization period. So get all the equipment moving. I, I didn't do the math in my head, but, but it's probably springtime 2020. To, for a okay, so assuming, assuming that there are not further delays. Yeah, I'm noticing that their engineer's letter, it's a 2022. Did you notice that too? Yeah, that was my question. Yeah, uh, do you know I mean, where they're pulling that from? Or are they just misinformed? From your what? The letter you handed us letter. says 2022. Yeah, yeah, we have issues with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a meeting with uh, the um, local bridge program manager um, at PennDOT and mm -hmm and uh, his supervisor and our project manager District 6 tomorrow to talk about the traffic control plan, which is a different element to the overall plan set. So we'll, we'll bogart a little bit of that time to discuss this issue. Dixon, do you have a question? Yeah, um, I mean, this, this is, I'm a, is just as concerned as everyone here. And unfortunately, this is very common in Pennsylvania. We have a major bridge problem. Um, Sean, has anyone given us any kind of recommendation on what to do now? We, it's up to us. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, so yeah. we paid people to look at this to yeah. give us a, a status update and a next paths. Yeah. Like if I was a roofer and I saw a giant hole in your roof and it was raining and it was forecast to rain, I tell you, you gotta get out of here. Like, is this, did they give us any, do we have anything we can go on? Or is this just a council decision without much, do we have any expert data or is this? Well, the inspection reports are very detailed and we've continued to score a one on a lot of our component uh, pieces like the, the deck, the, the stone masonry structure, the, the, the viability of the steel girders. Yes. We're very low. If it gets to zero, you got to close the thing. I don't wait till we get to it. No, but it's just, I'm, I'm just so trying to, this is just my question. It's, it's, it's a different yes. question. My question, I might, I think I might, I'm, that's where I, without knowing so, anything so, else, that's what I think, but I'm, I want to know more. So Jim, to make yeah. it more specific, in theory, an engineer could tell us is this a one impact, or a zero? The impact of vehicular traffic on that deteriorating scale versus the impact of just time and weather. Like in other words, depending on what the specific right. sure. structural right. weaknesses are, like that, that, that's what you're talking about, right? They could tell us. Let me, 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 let me focus my, Sean, what's your recommendation? I won't have a recommendation until I hear from the engineer and, um, but as to, as, as to the issue of, do we closing the bridge out of an abundance of caution or let's just say caution as, or leave it open pending further action, what would be your recommendation of those two choices? Well, I'd say for the short term, leave it open, and by that I mean four weeks. You know, The only thing I, I, I did bring up this issue when I first brought it up with the um, person who, the engineer who did the report for PennDOT, and indeed closing vehicular traffic would lessen the uh, amount of, of um, Wear, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The, the stress that the bridge, the concrete, and the steel would suffer. It wouldn't obviate the need to do what they've recommended. Right. You would still need to put this mm -hmm. in, but you might get a little, it might, without 3,700 pound cars rolling over it, and, and the occasional bus that gets up there too, and it's been recorded, yeah. um, <laughs> it would be. Um, but is anything different with respect to vehicular traffic than it was two months ago? Or is this a sidewalk issue? Like, help me, okay. help us. I don't know. Like you're saying, so you're saying, like, so we have some people in council, maybe me, 
and two, thinking, let's close this out of an abundance of caution, your response is, no, we can wait. I think we can wait a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's prudent? Why do you think we can wait a few weeks? Help me understand. Because the last time we had it inspected and the inspection that happened last week didn't tell us to close it. Okay. Yeah. And nothing's changed since that inspection. Yeah. Okay. That, that was the piece of data I wanted. Okay. Gigi? There are very few times I've sat in this room and been sick to my stomach. This is one of those moments. Um, in the words of Sam Quinn, know when to say when. We've rolled the dice. It's been close to, I don't know, 15 plus years, 20 years I actually for this thing. I spoke to Mary Jo Daly this morning. And she said it was uh, on the table when she came yeah. on to council 25 years ago. 25 years. Wow. And, and so what does it say, you know, and Jim, I, see, I understand your point, but, but I want to say um, it's like the breathalyzer, right? So do you, have to ha do you have to be at the maximum in order to prove the point when you go into court? I think a one, like, I think a one, we've been very lucky riding a one for a very long time. Um, I, I do not wish to expose anyone in this town or Amtrak or SEPTA or anyone riding or anyone who thinks they're walking under that bridge or anyone walking over. Um, I think we have to close the bridge. That's where I stand. Thank you. Ms. Mayor. Okay, taking everything into consideration, we're looking at spending, uh, you know, possibly a significant amount of money on this vertical uh, protection uh, device. Mm -hmm. The question is, the bridge is just barely hanging on. Right now, they didn't say we had to, the engineers looked at it and they didn't say it needed to be closed. And I think they're the experts, so I, I, I take their opinions with, uh, you know, a large, uh, a large, I don't know, whatever. But uh, the question is, the, the money we spend on this vertical protection device is money lost once that, that bridge is taken down. Yes. And if the bridge is, is, is basically non-functional, if it gets to a point where it's non-functional, any money we spend on that vertical protection mm -hmm. is money wasted. Um, it, is there, it, it, my thoughts are, if we're going to ultimately close the bridge, right. Do we take it down and save ourselves the money of having to spend on the vertical protection? Well, we're partially dismantled. <coughs> right. Right. Dismantle the parts that are in danger because they're going to be dismantled anyway. I don't it, think uh, it's that easy. Okay. Right. Sorry. We don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not. I have a, I remember when, we, we went through. when we removed the rock on that, Narbra paid to have the rock on that and your bridge removed. Okay. And in fact, and it was done by the same agreement of percentage of the, you know, yeah. the federal government paid for right. yeah. share, the state mm -hmm. paid a portion, the borough paid a portion. And they, it was the same process through the design. Yeah. They called it a, built, a bridge demolition design, and it was done just like the same, just like the bridge construction contract. And it may right. be that they're part of the same package. And maybe, maybe uh, once yeah. it take cost money to bring in the, the machinery to, to do that, and once they're there, you want get everything done at once. I've explored those options over the last, uh, since Friday with our team and with um, uh, Mr. Gross from Pickering Courts. Right. Um, and um, also spoke to Tim Stevenson from PennDOT District 6 and we'll have a conversation again tomorrow. The feedback I'm getting is that uh, pulling apart demolition and construction is not going to it's not going to it's not going to eliminate the need to do the vertical shielding because we're not going to okay. get the demo done okay. any sooner. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, we also are doubling our mobilization costs. Okay. All right. And that answers that. Oh, that's a noble, question. noble desire. No, that's good to know. I have one. Go ahead. Information. Sean, can you help council and me understand the number system for scoring bridges and? Like, because like, if, if all you know is zero is collapse and one is one above zero, that sounds horrible. But if it's out of a scale of two, maybe it's not. But if it's out of ten, maybe that's horrific. I believe it goes up to seven. So it's that bad. Yeah. So let me just make a comment. Mm -hmm. Structural engineers take their jobs very seriously, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and a one means things are not good. But it doesn't mean that you are sort of a windstorm away mm -hmm. from a surprise. Right? Yeah. There are large margins of safety built into any analysis. Nobody wants to see a bridge come down. And the fact is, is that there are probably more than 100,000 bridges across this country. And you drive over one almost every day. Yeah. You have no idea, right?
but you, you know, they're everywhere. They don't come down because structural engineers are doing their jobs. Sometimes. And when they tell you to, it's very rare. It's very rare. But when they tell you to take it down, it gets closed. And we have an inspection coming. We just had a visual inspection done. That's where I am. Go ahead, Bob. Sorry. I just have to offer this explanation of the term <clears throat> abundance of caution. <laughs> it says make, because I used it, and then I thought, is that really a thing? And it's actually a real estate term, but people do yeah. use it colloquially. Colloquially, we. Anyway, it says yeah. making decisions in a responsible way means weighing potential outcomes with the chances that those outcomes might occur. The phrase out of an abundance of caution is often used when explaining an action that isn't necessary but is going to be done anyway because you want to be extra careful. And that sort of sounds to me like the situation we're in. If, if we were to choose to close it, it may not be necessary, but we would be being extra careful. Mm -hmm. And can we? even potentially agree or vote on closing it until we get this next inspection. You know, so I would we're, agree. We're not suggesting right now even we close it until the bridge is repaired, but just right. close it until we have another inspection, which is in the next two weeks. Can I just, right. can I just, can we just think, yeah, let's play this out because this is a big deal. And Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm undecided. I don't have a date yet. Okay, but it will be soon. Let's just, I want to make sure, I, I, I think this is a big decision for like the everyday life of town. And I, I'm, I'm, I don't have a clear inclination in my head. So we got an update from Sean. And I'm not being, if I pick poor words, no one get mad at me, please. But Sean didn't come here saying we should or shouldn't close the bridge. That wasn't something we talked, that, that's not, that's something council came up with. So are we as politicians or policy makers or electeds, whatever you want to call it, and maybe, again, maybe, maybe this is what we should do, but should, should we just decide that we want to close it because it's a one when none of us really, like none of us here knows bridge. We, we don't know what we're doing. And if the people who get paid to do this, who have to take licensure, who have to get insurance, are telling us that it meets the criteria that hundreds of thousands of Pennsylvanians use to transport themselves every day. Do we, are we gonna say, well, we, may, we just wanna be extra safe and, and make a decision like that that's gonna inconvenience? I just, I don't know. I would want somebody, I would, if an engineer's saying you guys gotta close the bridge, then like amen, right? It's a slam dunk. But our engineers are telling us it's fine for now. So why are we? Well, it's our job, right? We have 4,000 plus people that we make decisions for every time we're in this room. And so when we talk about police procedure or fire procedure, we talk about infrastructure, storm water, we talk about any other piece, the consideration of the public, the public is who we represent and, uh, and, and our job is to take in this data, take in this information, and make decisions for those 4,000 plus people in the best way that we can. I certainly understand your point and that expertise is needed, but I think Cindy raised a really good point that says, let's close it until we actually have this next inspection and have that conversation maybe in two weeks or whenever a month, whenever they're gonna come back and give us, this, or maybe even Friday, we'll have the information. I do think that um, it, it is inconvenient, and again, I will say what I always say, we live in the most convenient time the world has ever known. You're not getting anywhere with convenience. <laughs> That's not the case to make for me. Um, it's going to be troublesome. There are going to need to be you know, alternate routes and detours, those items. I would rather err on the side of caution. It has been my job here for a long time to roll the dice and take the risk and say, let's, we'll take the hit because 4,000 people are counting on the decisions we make. And that's been everything from everything. So I'd rather err on the side of it. And to your point, um, you know, it's certainly less convenient than God forbid an emergency. Yeah, amen. Um, right. and, and I would right. feel much more comfortable closing it until we get an expert opinion, but I don't want to wait till an expert opinion comes in a month and says, oh yeah, you are now at a zero. <laughs> right, we're frightened. <laughs> right. Ms. Mayor. Um, and you talk about emergencies, and just keep in mind, if that bridge is closed to all vehicular traffic, it will also be closed to police vehicles who may need to get to the south side in the event of an emergency. So it's a double-edged sword. 
um, mm -hmm. there's an equal percent chance that someone could die of a heart attack so they don't get an ambulance. Is it, so get, so and, I am concerned about police vehicles <laughs> being able to get to the south side as fast as they can. All right. Can. I think everybody knows that. I would tend to counter that point by saying uh, I would, the documents we have and the information we have about how many emergency that. calls we have mm -hmm. counters that very idea. All right. So I think everybody has their opinion. I don't think anybody's changing anyone else's mind nope. at this point. <laughs> we cannot, as a council, take any action until extra public comment. If someone would like to make a motion at that time, I, I would like one more question, though. Yeah, sure. uh, you know, because I, and I agree with you. Like, look, if we, if everyone wants to do that, that's what'll happen, and that's that's how this goes. And I'm, you know, it's, it happens. But I guess it's one more. I'm at a point where I just why is another time where our borough manager is telling us we don't need to do this. Why aren't we listening? Like, why is it we're all like he does this 40, 50 hours a week. I'm here two, three hours a week tops. Yeah. Why don't we want to listen to him? This is his job. We, we just, we, we, we the, the guy that, the, the, the captain of the ship says, don't do this. We're passengers once in a while. I just, I think that, it, I think, and I also think that if I had to guess, if this was a casino, I think we'll close the bridge tonight. I would put the odds at 90 some percent. That's what's going to happen. But I would like to see us engender a culture where I think Sean is really smart. He works with these engineers. We have 10 minutes of data at this table. And we have our data secondhand through Sean. Sean gets paid for this. This is his job. And he's telling us that he thinks it's fine. Why are we... Aren't we rushing to a decision on something that's not this really an emergency? Let's let everybody, and balances. Let's yeah. let everybody digest. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to move this. We're not. This is not an agenda item. I'm going to move us forward. Thank uh, you. So let's uh, head back to Planning Commission, Mr. Brefty. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so we received your letter, um, and I I know that I want to thank you because I know you prepared it very quickly for us uh, after Monday night's meeting. Um, but I know some council members did not have an opportunity to read it in depth, so perhaps you could provide some summary. Maybe we could start with the first part. Go Are you uh, interested in the 114 forest agenda? Yes, 114 forest. Let's start there. Okay. Um, and I haven't had a chance to read it. But it went out today, so keep Yeah, I'm mind. sorry. We've no, had until 10 o'clock Monday. Just make sure I like, <laughs> don't start. As if I read it, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Well, you are all aware. Thank you. There is a development proposal to build an apartment building at 114 Forest. Um, last November and December, uh, we received uh, a, the first step of a three-stage review process, the tentative sketch plan, as well as an application for conditional use. Because under the zoning code, those types of buildings can only be built in that area under conditional use, which council has to offer. I believe in December, council approved the conditional use with extensive conditions that needed to be met and also approved the tentative sketch plan. So you've seen this before. And so now the applicant comes back to the borough for the second stage of the design, which is called the preliminary plan. And in that plan, the applicant is supposed to respond to the concerns and the conditions that have been raised. When that plan is received, um, the borough engineer and the borough zoning officer and the Montgomery County Planning Commission staff and the borough planning commission all review the application and forward their comments on to the staff and to the council. We, at the Planning Commission, we like to wait until all those other comments are received. So we have the benefit of the engineer and the zoning officer and the Montgomery County Planning Commission. So we assembled all that information, and in our meeting Monday night, uh, we reviewed the application. Um, and the applicants were there, um, the attorneys and the designers and the owners of the property. The way the conversation went is that the applicants were asked to respond to all the comments that the Planning Commission and all the other entities had made, and they went through them one by one. And for the most part, they agreed to comply to the requests and concerns that were raised by the various entities, which was great. Um, at the end of the review, there were really two issues that stood out, which I summarized in my letter. Um, we are busy. Um, completing the minutes of the meeting. So if you would like a record of the other conversation, we'll be able to provide that. It just hasn't been enough time. But 
the two salient issues which I wrote about in my letter were the issue of um, stoops that encroach into the right-of-way and non-compliance with one aspect of the zoning code which relates to how the fronts of buildings should be designed. Now as to the stoops, um, one of the conditions that council uh, made in the conditional use approval was that the applicant would be permitted to encroach into the right-of-way uh, as long as um, whatever encroachments were built could be removed at council's or the borough's request for any reason. Um, and uh, because some of the stoops lead to doors, that the entrances could be made compliant with the building code. That was in the condition. Now, the Planning Commission had taken a slightly different stance in its, in its recommendation to you, which was that um, we did not believe there should be any encroachment um, of stoops. We did feel that encroachments of planning areas was okay. So in this application, both the stoops and the planning areas encroach. In reviewing the plans and discussing it with the applicant, the Planning Commission remains concerned about the encroachment of the stoops. Um, while we acknowledge that the applicant has agreed to meet the conditions that council has imposed, um, we don't feel that in, in the real world practicality that that condition could easily be met. Uh, because uh, if you are um, asking somebody, asking a property owner to take the front stoop off their house for, some, whether, for whatever reason, um, it's likely that that won't be an easy thing to comply with. Um, we did inquire as to whether or not that egress was required for fire code reasons. The applicant said no. Um, we, re we, we inquired as to whether the internal design of the unit was configured so that was truly considered a front entrance. The applicant said no. The interior entrance from the interior hallway would be the front entrance. Um, and they were, the applicant was, um, um, uh, felt very strongly that the units would function fine if the stoops were removed. Um, our view was that they're marketing these as townhomes. Townhomes have front doors and stoops on the street. Uh, that's what people will be buying into. We live in Narberth. The, pre the, the premium is on having buildings that you can walk to from, the, you know, connect to the street. Mm -hmm. um, and so we feel that um, in, in, in reality that if council or the borough ever needed to ask for that condition to be imposed, it's, it's likely that the, the, the council, that the borough would receive a lot of resistance and it would be a very thorny situation. Um, so, that, so we still believe that the recommendation not to have stoops in the right of way is a good one. We also think it sets bad precedent. Um, we also believe, although we're not paid to work on these designs, that there are some relatively simple design solutions that would allow the stoops to remain but not encroach in the right of way. Um, quite frankly, when we ask the architect about this, the architect gets very defensive about the design. Um, so it's not always easy to have a technical conversation and sometimes in the meetings it's hard to do that. Um, so what we have recommended is, we, we, we in overall think it's a great project. We, we don't want to um, 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 create a situation where the the project would not occur. But we think it would be uh, useful to ask the applicant to, go, applicant to go back and try again to d redesign that edge of the building so that the stoops don't encroach into the right of way. We think that's a reasonable request to make. And so we're asking council to consider that recommendation. Yes, Michelle. Question. But your recommendation is that the planters can remain and encroach in the right of way to, to the full extent that they do now, just not. Because I believe they're flush with the the, the sides of the steps and the stoops. Right? They are, yes. But the so reason we don't have, have a concern with stuff. those okay. is because they don't have the same role of providing access to the house. If you took them away, more, they'd be easier to remove. Yeah, I don't think you'd receive the same kind of, like if a resident had been living in the townhouse for 10 years and all of a sudden the borough said, we need to take your stoop right, away. Right, yeah, I understand that. But I don't think the same thing would happen if you took the planner. My question was like, but they still encroach the they same do. amount. So what's, yes. so the concern is just that in the future, the encroachment may present an issue that it doesn't at present present. I mean, yes. We, we feel the stoops are integral to the functioning of the unit, mm -hmm. and removing them 
would then... Um, no, I understand that. Yeah. I'm just wondering if the encroachment, if we're okay with the encroachment of the planters. Right. But not okay with the encroachment of the... And there's, I guess what I'm trying well, to figure out is what do we think is going to happen in the future that would make us want to remove all of those encroachments? I don't know, but you, you are okay with the encroachment of these items as long as they're removable. Right. You're not okay with the encroachment just the encroachment. The, you're only okay with the encroachment if they can be removed. Is the ask to amend the zoning code? No, the ask is simply to ask the developer between this stage of the design and the final design to go back and try to redesign it so that there's no encroachment. Can you recognize the zoning amendments? Jim, that's a different, not, that's a different agenda zoning. item. It's not about the zoning, it's about the conditional use. And, yes. And, and we're not talking about the zoning. We, we, gave, the them, we gave them instructions that we would only approve mm -hmm. on the that whenever it was put in the right way, it was removable. Oh, I don't know. I remember. Right. I was here. Right. No, no, just, just, just help me help me out. Right. Right. I just, I just, this is why I'm, I, I'm going to answer the question. I'm going to get lost. Just help me, please, Bob. Recommendation. The NPC recommends that council approve the proposed zoning amendments. We're not. Uh, Mr. Nixon, thank you for the right. Okay, I just got this today, so it's just. I understand. Just, we yeah. we uh, gave you recommendations like, on two agenda items. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. Okay, Take thank you. Take a look at uh, page three. three. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess just to, the, to what you were, I'd just like to speak to what you were speak, just speaking about and what Sean was at, and what Michelle was asking you about. The Planning Commission basically is saying to us that the planting areas are not of concern to them because they believe that it's believable to them right. that when asked mm -hmm. to remove them, yeah. there won't there won't be such a big concern because mm -hmm. it's just recovering the space that's already the right of way for some other kind of planting area. I mean, or, right. or for something right. else, like whatever else mm -hmm. would be approved under the building code at that mm -hmm. time. But it's harder for the planning commission to believe mm -hmm. that steps are uh -huh. something yeah. right. they, sure. to them it seems that steps are so integral to right. the building that it's not believable to them that's that, not practically that, that they removed. could be removed and not right. change, steps away. change the yeah. thing uh, you know i work in the, toy, in the toy business <laughs> there are rules about what you're allowed to sell to children yeah, sure. right you can't make something that is super attractive and clearly a toy and then just put a label on it and say not for children yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You can't make steps which are clearly an entrance right. to a unit and say, oh, these are just decorative. Right. Because they're they're exactly. on the face. Right. No. Yeah. Is there a reason, is there a, a timeliness issue that we have to act on this tonight? Um, my understanding, and I would, I would defer to the solicitor on matters like this, is that you actually could, um, you, first of all, I, you, next, I, just, I think, I I think your business meeting in January or your business meeting in February, you could act either in January or February under the time frame that the planning code, the municipal planning code gives you. I would make sure, check with Sean about the actual dates, but I believe you could act on this in January or February. January is March. I'm sorry. Okay. Excuse me. No, no. Like, uh, March or April. That big. You, March you, you, April. You're yeah. correct, Jim. <laughs> March or April. You could, you could you act on it this month. Yeah. So, why, so I'm, I'm, I'm I not know, being I had asked the planning commission to consider this quickly. So that they would be able to come to us, so that yeah, we will have time. time. Because so very, you know, and, and Todd will attest as these applications work their way through. It's common for us to sort of get this information at the zero hour. Yeah. And they have taken, they have made the effort at this point to get us the information ahead right. of time, so we have time to. That was a yeah, 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 and I'm not. I've tried. This is an understanding question, but if this is something that's not time, like there's no time pressure at all, and the letter just went out at five, if it's not. I mean, I'm really not trying to jab you. Help me understand why we're talking about it at 7. Like, why did it have to come up tonight? I, I feel it's important we discuss it now because the letter was available and because at the next meeting, at the business meeting, we're scheduled to vote on a preliminary sketch plan approval. And I don't think we want to be jammed up then. Like to be, I don't think we're we end up with it all. At once. We don't want to end up with a whole slew of issues and complicated <laughs> Issues to discuss have, right this, at the time of the presentation. Is this just that's explanatory. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, my question is actually innocent. I just wanted yeah. to understand it's just what's so the can, reason to bring something mm -hmm. up tonight. So, the it's not, so, so the so reason is and learn. so so for, for discussion. It's, I think it's helpful just to visualize that it's actually a significant number of steps oh, oh, that we're talking about right, that encroach. Right. So it might be four or five steps with railing. And further yes. down too. So that you know, we're not just talking about one step. Going over here. It's a significant structure. Okay. All right, Cindy. Um, Todd, you had mentioned that this may set a precedent on plans that come before us in the future. Is that correct? 
my, so, my personal. So your personal. But no, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. You, you can't take, you can't de-stoop someone. You're moving a planner is one thing. Just create a new word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is this so we we granted this in conditional use and now we're taking it back or no? Because this was a question that Michelle actually brought up during the conditional use hearing. You yeah, had she said did. she did. That's yeah. a front door, and the architect got very defensive. Mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. As I uh, spicy. At that. He was spicy. He was spicy. <laughs> Uh, okay, Todd, I just want to thank you because I, I do agree with you that this sets a precedent that is going to potentially cause us some problems as we begin to look at some new plans. So let me, let me, yeah, since we're going to discuss it, let's, let's discuss it, mm -hmm. right? So basically we made the conditional use that they can have this, but we have a right to make it go away, the stairs. But the practicality of just making stairs, removing stairs is just, we all know that just sounds kind of crazy. Because because there's a yeah, door just, just that's the, five, six feet off. I get it. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, right. No, no, no. So so we're so you're saying that we should basically have them redesign this so they don't have to be in the right of way at all. Okay. So they could put it. Yeah. Then they could they could put an entrance at street level. That's it. Interior stairs. I will yeah. tell you, Jim, if that is the consent without a vote, but with, through discussion, the consensus of council in an open session, that can be communicated back to the developers. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, so we don't. Helps me. So we don't wait I've told until they make the their presentation yeah. and vote it down and waste everybody's time. Yeah, yeah. got it. Yeah, I think this it's very reasonable to yeah. go ahead with the recommendation. Yeah. Let's all. I think we also need to be aware that um, it's possible since we already approved their preliminary sketch plan. Okay. Like sort of on the basis that they were providing, um, that they were allowed to build in the encroachment by our zoning, and they were providing that six foot clear space between the trees and the planters, that we've sort of, you know, that we did technically approve this thing. Mm -hmm. well, um, we're we're issuing clarifying but, remarks. But we do need to clarify. We need to and write I think, that by John. And we don't necessarily, yeah. we need to, I think we, need, <laughs> we may need our solicitors' help to understand what we actually approved. But there's, a, but there's an additional issue in your letter, Todd, that requires the applicant may look again at their design, and therefore it may be, you know, something they're going to need to look at anyway, is the design of that facade. Yes, so, of course. The other facade. Yeah, so the winter. can you ask Todd to go through that? Okay, Todd, yeah. let's talk about the other facade. So uh, we were just talking about Forest Avenue a moment ago. Um, now we're going to turn and talk about Windsor Avenue. Um, our zoning code, th this application came in before the zoning code, as it pertains to corner lots, was amended. I, was it January or December? I forget which month. So at the time this application came in, a, a, a corner building um, had to designate one of its sides facing a street as the primary frontage. It, although the zoning code expresses an opinion about what that should be, it's really left up to the applicant. <coughs> This was a matter of great debate, you may recall, um, in the first phase application. And that decision has consequences on the other setbacks and how the building sits in the line. So in this submission, um, the applicant has determined that the primary frontage is on Windsor Avenue. So even though the Forest Avenue has all the nice stoops and doors, that's technically the side of the building, and technically the front of the building is on Windsor Avenue. Now, under the zoning code, um, front of any building has to have a, 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 a design feature called a frontage. And the purpose of that design feature is to ensure that the building relates to the street in the way that we're used to having buildings in Narberth relate to streets. Um, for each type of building, uh, there are different kinds of frontages that are permitted. Um, and for apartment buildings, there are four or five different frontages that are permitted. They're enumerated in my letter. Um, this applicant did not um, indicate any type of frontage for the frontage of the building. Um, and um, let alone one that is allowable. And so that is that's just simply not meeting the zoning code. Um, and simply needs to be resolved. Um, it was not an issue in the first review because in the first review we didn't know what the front of the building was. Exactly, mm, yeah. and we asked them to go back and confirm it. Now they have to go back and confirm it, but they don't have a frontage. There was some semantic confusion, but I don't think that's important for you to know unless you want to know about it. Should we make them have a frontage? 
We want to make them comply with the zoning code, which, which requires them to have a permit. Yes. Yeah. Right. They, they want to say that the permit is on winter because they get more favorable setbacks. Sure, sure. I should ask a procedural question, yes. though. So we went through the condition, back to the first issue. We went to use that allowed for the encroachment into the right of way with the proviso that we could ask it to be removed. Now that we granted that, as somebody who doesn't practice zoning law, what's the basis with which we can take it away? We're not taking it away. We're clarifying what our belief is about something that is removable. Okay. That's what it comes down to. They yeah. say, stoop, you just take it off. It's not part of the, the you know, the front the wall. Building, you could, right? You we say, stoop, right? come on, let's be real. I guess I would want to... I, I, I'm not, I don't have a problem with that, but I'd want to talk to John because if I was on the opposing side of this, I'd say, Maybe not. You're changing not the, to the definition. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we're, we're just talking about. Let, let's yeah. get through this letter. Yeah. Look, I'm I'm just, this is, I'm, no, I was elected, this is what I do. I'm and just and, pulling yeah. we, don't have to we don't have to take any action this evening, right? This is informational, but, yeah. and we can take an action, which is yeah. to ask John, and right. in two weeks he'll be here and give us an answer. So we'll get to that. Yeah. Can you just briefly um, summarize for us the issues raised by the engineer, the zoning officer, and the NCPC? If that's even possible, and if not, it's, or if it's so administrative that it, it, it's sort of not necessary, just let us know. Um, I think they're largely, um, they're really largely um, administrative issues. Um, many of the, uh, I mean, the, the zoning officer did call out the issue of the frontage Sure. Um, but most of the zoning officer's comments were that the um, the drawings did not demonstrate compliance with the code. The, the, the design does, but the drawings didn't, and, they, and they're asking that to be documented, okay. uh, largely. Um, the, 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 uh, I'm not missing anything. The, um, um, one of the issues that the borough engineer raised, which was um, discussed extensively, but I think to everyone's satisfaction, had to do with a variance or a waiver, excuse me, that the applicant will be seeking in regard to the um, stormwater infiltration. Um, the infiltration of the stormwater from their catchment basins, essentially, under the building into the, um, into the, uh, into the ground. Um, but, the borough engineer was satisfied that they had um, uh, come up with a, a good solution to the stormwater and that the waiver was was warranted. Um, I I could try to explain it in more depth to you. No, that was the other issue of substance, I think, that came up. I just wanted to have a broad understanding of what the, the issues in C were. Um, let me quickly see. From the county. There were a lot of uh, comments too that um, the way that the um, sidewalks were designed and treated needed to be documented more precisely. For example, um, the drawing showed that there's a utility pole in the entrance way to the parking garage. And so they, they have to do a next level of refinement. I think these are things you would normally see at this stage that would, they say they will comply with these requests and these would be refined for the final plan. Sure. So, so that was another broad category of things, the pedestrian realm and, and the specific design features were not documented precisely. But no code violations or really that were still. Can you bring us up to speed now on Ordinance 1014 and where that uh, stands sort of in the overall process just to get everybody back on the same page and then what your, your recommendation is yeah. based on there to Ordinance 1014 is an ordinance to amend the zoning code. Um, it was um, developed in response to requests from council last fall. Uh, Mr. Walker and I worked on the language of it. It was approved by the Planning Commission in December, I believe, and forwarded to council. Uh, council, I believe, uh, after a debate about the merits of different aspects of it, uh, uh, voted to advertise that zoning ordinance in January. Um, now that the zoning ordinance is advertised, it is on a time clock of um, uh, uh, needing to have uh, planning commission review, county planning commission review, and a public hearing before council can vote on it. So we're in that official public review process of an advertised zoning ordinance. And essentially, 
um, you're, you, you sort of have the ability to vote it up or down. If you want to amend the, the ordinance, you need to go back and start the public review process over, unless it's an insignificant thing like a typo. So you're in the middle of that public review process. And so we reviewed the text in our capacity under the municipal planning code as the planning commission reviewing a zoning text. Um, obviously, because the text that you sent back to us was the text that we sent to you, we recommended approval of the zoning text. Uh, we did the planning, the, the, the Montgomery County Planning Commission made two good recommendations that we also recommend that you accept, which are at the same time that you um, adopt the text that you also request that the map, that the, excuse me, the charts in the zoning code be updated to reflect the changes in the text. That is actually a technical thing that needs to be in the ordinance. Uh, the ordinance needs to say not just we're changing the text, but we're also changing the tables. And that was not in the ordinance. But it's our belief that if, and, and it also, re, the, the Montgomery County Planning Commission requested that the uh, ordinance be amended to uh, include cross-references to other parts of the zoning code that it refers to in plain English but not by actually referring to the segment. So it'll, it'll say like, uh, this needs to be approved through the special exception process, but it doesn't say what section. And so basically, they, those are housekeeping changes that they're requesting and we endorse those housekeeping changes. So our recommendation is to approve those um, along with those two recommendations the Planning Commission made. The Planning Commission made one other recommendation um, uh, in regard to setbacks in Windsor Avenue. It was a good recommendation, but it would require re-advertising, mm -hmm. and so we, we felt that was not appropriate at this time right, so to do that. So, point of information here, and Todd, I apologize. The ordinance was prepared by council and approved to advertise at January 15. We received back the letter from MCPC on February 20th, That's right. and we adopted this ordinance on February 20th. That oh, you did? Yeah. Right. So it's done. So I would suggest holding those recommendations until we have another zoning ordinance change yeah. queued up. And well, my apologies. No, okay. uh, and my apologies, because when we spoke, uh, I did not point that out. <laughs> there we are. So now you can. Is that a trick question that I was asked? <laughs> <laughs> I thank, thank Mr. Metric and the other two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Right. So let's move on. I have, I, I have a request of Council President. Yes. Um, so I made a resolution, a couple resolutions at the beginning of this year to try and function better in this body. And one of them was that I'm going to invest a lot of my own time making sure that I understand the concepts and details of anything involving zoning, building approvals, etc. That's an area in which I am woefully undereducated. So far I have done that, and I understand this was brought up for discussion tonight, but discussion is how decisions get made, and I do not appreciate not being able to fully participate in the discussion because I have not had time to absorb, digest, and understand the same information as some of my colleagues, and I like to be on equal footing when discussing a concept. And I do have a full-time job, and I can't often, if it's not emergent, read things same day if they're several pages and require research. So I kindly ask, that if we're gonna be doing things that change the shape of the town, like zoning or large buildings, if we could please discuss it once we've all had a chance. I was sitting here half hearing what everyone's saying, so I'm half trying to read a five page letter with a lot of fine print and details in it. And it just makes me feel like I'm not doing a good job because I don't know what you all know, at least those, I don't know, I don't think we should do a poll, but I know not everyone at this table had time to digest the same information and I would appreciate that. That would help me do a better job. I, I noted, I tried to make it clear, we're not taking an action at this time. It is, it was, we received a letter, which is recommendations. Uh, we asked Mr. Bressy to attend so that he could offer, because these things are extremely technical and complex, face-to-face mm -hmm. -face, mm -hmm. a summary. We had the opportunity to ask questions. This is not our only opportunity, and we're not taking any action tonight. So. I, I, I have tried to take under advisement what you brought up a few months ago, um, which was to offer more time for consideration of matters. 
and I have been uh, asking council more, you know, are we ready to discuss item X or Y or Z tonight? Mm -hmm. And um, so if the answer is no, and I wish we could discuss it tonight, but we can, we move on. Um, so I, I believe we've addressed the concern that you raised. I don't want to enter into a situation where we can't sort of move along the information gathering process because each piece of information hasn't been fully consumed in order. Well, we just agree, disagree, and that's okay. I mean, okay. if one person had a chance to carefully read a set of data and another person hasn't, both can't equally participate in the discussion of the subject matter, and I just want equal opportunity to participate in the discussion. And we just don't see it the same way, and that's okay. Understood. Thank you. Uh, let's go to committee reports. I'll call on you, Mr. Nixon. Um, we had two, we had a long list of matters, but I'm going to keep it brief because we disposed of all of them at the last business meeting except for two. Um, one was we had the rec board guidelines we had asked the borough manager to discuss with rec board just how we might start a conversation, but since that happened, we had a change in policy and the rec board has been upgraded from a committee structure to reporting to you, Aaron. That's so. Correct. What I did was I just put that in an email to confirm to the rec board and Sean that, you know, basically that this is your thing. So that's, that's off of our agenda. And then we had left it in f &A that we wanted to poll council and see if there was an interest in possibly doing a tax credit program for the firefighters it would cost Narberth approximately $3,500 a year. Um, it would essentially mean that firefighters who met a certain criteria in terms of volunteer hours, um, which would be confirmed by the leadership of the fire company, that then they would qualify for a rebate of some of their tax bill from the borough tax and out of every dollar of your property tax, approximately 25 cents of that is from the borough. So realistically, this would give full time, like the, the most involved firefighters would receive a couple hundred dollars or so per year. Assuming they own a property in the borough. Assuming that they meet the criteria that and that they're a homeowner within the borough. Any thoughts? We're not going to introduce it. I just wonder if there's interest. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so I'm very supportive of that um, gesture. Um, the firefighting recruitment is a national issue, um, I've read. You know, that the, uh, the enrollment for firefighters coming forward and volunteering their time is this is not only a Narberth issue, but a national issue. I think it's just a really good gesture for us to commend those of our neighbors who are committed to going to drills three times a month, to getting called at all hours in the night, um, to, to thank them for their time. I think this is not only a recruitment tool, however, that it's also a retention tool. Um, I said this at the public safety meeting. I actually asked Chief Dixon, um, you know, I would, I would imagine, like many industries, the institutional and lived knowledge is, is really an essential part of the education that gets passed down when you go on to these calls. So uh, I would like to see this extended to all firefighters and not just used as a recruitment tool, but afforded to those folks that are currently volunteers and have for, for generations. So I think we have, a, we have a version of that, uh, this uh, potential ordinance that uh, has a point system basically based on participation. Mm -hmm. um, it's weak. It's a copy of Lower Marion's, essentially right. applied in Arbor. I think it's important to understand yeah. that regionally this is happening. This like, this puts us on par with with literally our surroundings. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and it's unfortunate that it's not more. And I think that we would probably all agree that this is an incredibly critical job. I don't run into burning buildings, nor do I want to, and I'm really happy to give some of my taxes um, as a thank you to those who do. Um, any other thoughts or comments? Yeah, I think Cindy said, Ralph, I can't really add to it. 
I'm also supportive of this. Because you're asking, you're sort of I'm a just poll, I just want to know. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to invest to that in any time I all of you yeah. unless we have support. Sure. Yeah. Understood, Jim. I, I, Understood. I, I, I support this as well. I echo Understood. what he said. Okay. I'll, I'll just offer uh, a few quick comments. I mean, as a volunteer firefighter myself, obviously, uh, I'm intimately familiar with the sacrifices that uh, you know firefighters make, and um, in this community, especially, I mean, we're very blessed to have a strong fire company. That's not the case in every community. Um, I was. Uh, I wish it wasn't a reality that we had to do something like this, but I think um, we do see the surrounding communities adopting similar. Uh, and I, we also saw, and I think I shared this with you, Gigi, as public safety chair, yeah. uh, the day I hope we don't get to, yeah. which is where um, you know you reach a point where you have to sort of pay by the call to get people to come out in the middle of the night. Um, yeah. And I, I think you know the more we can do to facilitate not getting to that day, um, and that is, of course, not the worst scenario for us financially, which would be we have an obligation to provide fire service Absolutely. to this community yeah. and a fully paid department mm -hmm. um, would be a significant financial burden. Mm -hmm. So the, the small things, how much did you say approximately? It's, about, it's going to cost us about 3500 a year, give about or take. 3500 dollars a year for a community right. of 4200 right. people. Right. I think uh, we're putting our money in the right place. So my two cents. Thank you. All right, so Jim. That's it. Take it, go from there. Um, Thanks, can you talk a little bit about the rec board? Um, because I had a conversation with Mr. Bush, and he raised a couple of important points, and I wanted to address them with all council. Um, when we, well, the rec board used to be an organization um, that met once a year. Yeah, right. They had a user meeting, right. sort of the same <laughs> cast of characters every time. You get, yeah, everything's the same, we're all good, you know, and move on. We, uh, under uh, Councillor Fortner's leadership asked the rec board to uh, become more active, become more involved, and um, they started meeting monthly and uh, made significant progress in sort of addressing some of our deferred maintenance, calling things to attention, being those eyes and ears. Um, but we've had another shift, which is now we have a director of public works um, who has addressed many of those issues and, and their team continues to be much more vigilant and active in doing so. Mm -hmm. And I think the rec board is feeling, uh, if I could speak for them, Fred, uh, that it may be time for some new direction or marching orders and uh, for them to understand how frequently they need to meet to be effective um, under you know, the, the new state of affairs in the borough. Sure. So maybe we could, if anyone has any comments or thoughts now, we can talk to it and then give it some thought because I'd like to give them some direction by, uh, by the time we get into April. We actually, and, and the point I want to make is we actually changed the ordinance for, for that organization, for that uh, yes, board, board of commission, that said they had to meet every month. So the important part of this for me is to remember that we did it by ordinance. We can't just say meet what you want. We have to sort of figure out what that looks like, what's going to work for them, what's going to work for us, and then change that ordinance if we so deem. Mm -hmm. So that's my point. I think it was a resolution. But anyway, it needs to be changed. Yes. What's the... Um, What's the rec board's role in relationship to the user groups and, and sort of in the, the sharing of the resources of the parks and fields and stuff? Are they still involved in doing that job? They are, and yeah. I think it's complicated. Yeah. Fred, I'll let Fred speak to it, <laughs> and then I'll ask Mr. Metro. Yeah, historically we've held um, a user meeting, which in the past um, was a way to schedule use of things like borough spaces, including, uh, I believe, some of the building spaces as well as the fields. But you know, the rec board no longer has any responsibility over scheduling uh, anything really. It's all handled over email. Um, you know, the borough handles the buildings, and then uh, the athletic association handles scheduling for the fields. So it's what we've done in the past. We don't have any direct responsibility now, but we still hold the meeting because you know that's how it's been done, and we get feedback from um, various user groups. Um, so. You know, it's a way for them to offer feedback, but we no longer have any direct oversight over them. Um, so uh, that's why we're wondering if it's something we should be continuing to hold. And what I suggested to Mr. Bush was that we hold this next meeting that's coming up, but use it as an opportunity to make sure that everybody has received the communication of the new way that we're doing things, so that it, it, it may be the last user meeting. 
So how does the athletic association function in relationship to the borough manager and the council? Because with the rec board, they're accountable to the council, and uh, uh, I'm not sure what the role of the athletic association is to the borough. Mr. Never going to look at them. Yeah. Well, we're trying to develop that relationship with uh, under Ed Harmon's leadership to communicate about how and when the fields are being used, because a lot of our maintenance responsibilities are directly related uh, uh, related to um, usage patterns. So how and when, you, you can't have it both ways. You can't have a field that you play rugby on every single day of every single, it, this isn't what happened, but, and, and to have it be green and lush. We need to find out a good way to, to support our new turf management program that it, that'll be putting in place so that, so that the resource is properly managed. And we're, we're figuring that out. It's very complex. I think we're at the first steps of that conversation. And the athletic association has, in the past, been responsible for the turf management. Or? No, they've been they've been doing all of the uh, the bulk of the usage is scheduled through the North Athletic Association. But we, the, 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 the athletic association always did that kind of in conjunction with the rec board, or if it was. I'm just. I guess I'm. I'm puzzled as to how the. And the management of the user groups became the responsibility of the athletic association. I, I, I guess I thought it was being... Abdication. Well, I thought it was being done by the rec board. Abdication. Well, that's... I don't... I need more information on that. Abdication of the previous management, abdication of people who sat in these chairs. They abdicated the role of caring for scheduling, creating an actual parks and recreation department that would have handled all that, would have come out of the office in any other community, or Marion, other places. It comes out of Ed's role or subordinates or, or another piece. It is not di done by an organization that uses the, the heaviest users in the field. It's just not done that way. So when I came into this room and had, you were here, parks and recreation, we wanted to change it to parks and recreation to have a full understanding that it's not possible for an organization to you know, manage the schedule for all of the fields because there's an inherent bias, perhaps. There's, there's something missing in our role for it. Well, so and when we changed the ordinance to, mm -hmm. we didn't, we, mm -hmm. didn't we make the rec board responsible for creating the user policy? And the rec board. I don't have the document in front of me, so I, I'm not and the rec board sure. Did that. We have a user policy. I believe we have a user policy. A user policy. Well, no, no. no not for fields. So, I mean, not you know, for, for those buildings. We for buildings, not for, for not for not right. for parks. So that, right, that parks was, and recreation oh, fields. So right. that was an item on the right. property committee agenda. Is that on the big list? The property committee was <laughs> was was there is, an, user, there is a number of parks is. policy. Yeah, but it's more. Uh, it, it's not necessarily related to. Um, you know? sort of sports, sort yeah. of everything else. Yeah. That's so we cool. still need a user, it sounds like we still need a policy around mm -hmm. the use of the fields. And, the and Fred, you can tell me, this came from Maureen in mid-October? Yeah, so we decided, you know, um, I forget whether it was Michelle who brought it up or whether it was something we decided to work on, but we looked at Lower Marion's parks policies and we, and some other local, um, you know, municipalities, and we drafted um, a proposed Parks use policy that we sent out to property committee. Um, I think it's it's been sent out again. I, I know Sean requested it when he met with us. So uh, we do have a have a draft out there that you can you know look at and so that do whatever has you like. Been adopted. It so hasn't it, been adopted. There's would no. This, would this cover the athletic users and move their sort of approval and scheduling to the rec board from the athletic association? Is that? It doesn't move it to the rec board, but it contains guidelines for whoever the borough wants. I mean, it, it's basically a set of guidelines, and it says this is who should get priority for using the fields. We did not provide a, a structure for who's going to administer that. Right. So that that's your, you know, that's no, your that's call. Great, that's a great answer, because that's the correct answer. <laughs> Can I clarify, and to, to your point, mm -hmm. um, because that was my understanding of how this was set up. I, for years I had asked <laughs> about the tennis courts, and the answer was, well, the NAA, the NAA deals with the tennis courts. And I never understood how mm -hmm. the Athletic Association mm -hmm. would be have any control over our tennis court responsibility for them. Absolutely. Right. I can absolutely never get a clear answer. So we can take that back into what I agree should be a parks and rec, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there should not be any organization that's 
not our borough, staff or administrator, that's determining who can use the field when and where and how. And when, where, and Access yeah. is ours. But I, I think you also want to be mindful of the fact that the NAA is performing an incredibly valuable Absolutely. service to the users of the field now by coordinating a very complex field schedule. So, you know, mm -hmm. we may we may want to continue to partner with them in, in, in getting that aspect of the work done, as well as have a policy in place that the, that the rec boards developed. How does that, um, how do we as a council sort of review that, what's the process by which we review well, that we policy and begin to look here's, at so it? So here's what I'm gonna along. suggest to sort of close some loops now okay. that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm okay. taking over mm -hmm. the direct relationship, you okay. know, the new committee structure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna ask that, uh, Ed, you have seen a copy of this? Perhaps you could issue, you know, the office could issue a recommendation to the infrastructure committee um, as to whether this is sort of on track or off track in terms of the direction you're hearing that council would like to go with this. And I know the direction you guys are trying to go in terms of professionalizing all of the different aspects of borough operations. Um, and you then, for the FMA, right? for, for policy, for user policy. Uh, well, see, this is where it gets oh, complicated. Okay. Yeah, this is where the mess but, begins. But it manages <laughs> the physical infrustructure. Gotcha. So, like, is this is this within? So like, is, would this make Ed's job easier and better, or right. would it make it worse? Right. Could right. could it be a a project of the two chairs? Like, suppose Jim Nixon and I worked as joint as chair joint mm -hmm. chairs to review that policy, hammer it out together, mm -hmm. and come up with something. Mm -hmm. Then we could each take it back to our individual committees mm -hmm. for review. And then come for a joint recommendation. I, I to think that would be great. Along would, with the manager, I would love to see a, a recommendation from the office that would lead you guys into knowing yeah, yeah. which direction. So to you'll take. you'll you'll get some together, and then you and I'll. I if think that's, that's great. If that works for. Mm -hmm. Works for. Anne. So this is a number one then on the list. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's no, a joke from like, Sean. It's not a joke. That's a legitimate question. <laughs> and I'm going to say uh, that the answer is no. It is not a number one, okay. but it is something that we would like to we would like to accomplish. Okay. So put it on the list. I'll can, I, can I? I just like yeah. It's, 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 I've been trying too. It's like either you either interrupt or you don't get hurt. Go ahead, There's no Jen. balance. That's not. Well, let man, Gigi. She has the end. Go ahead. Man, I'm invisible. The um, I know I'm out the door, but you know, come on. The um. <laughs> The, um, the interesting thing, I'm going to throw further mess onto the table and to all those involved in creating a document, reviewing a document. Um, the Lower Marion School District has expressed, Aaron, as you were there for one of yeah. those meetings, that um, you know the fields and the conversation that this community government needs to, and they have expressed uh, some connection back to the Lower Marion School Dis District for use of fields. Um, it just in the most recent intergovernmental meeting uh, was brought up again that use of fields um, and maybe uh, Norbert finding a way to participate and having um, a conversation with the school district regarding use um, to host athletics. To host athletics. So that is something they are desirous of. I see not. So perhaps maybe a few council members are desirous of that as well. But I think it's time for the borough to go forward and. Um, try to do as much as it can. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. The township shouldn't carry the whole ball, literally. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I've added this to the infrastructure and the public, uh, and the finance mm -hmm. administration list. Okay. Can I, yeah, can I, I, can my, I was waiting for, go ahead, Jim. Um, just to what Bob was, so I struggle with it, um, with, with, with how we, because even I feel like sometimes either you interrupt or you don't get hurt at all. Yeah, so I, I try, I have a hard time sitting and jumping. I wish there was a half or medium, but um, yeah. to what Bob said, because it, it it, I thought this was like a good moment for us to look at culture and what we're doing differently and to what you said about the NAS and, and I was like both of what you said really chimed with me like we're going from a the reason the NAA did it and to what Gigi said it's essentially because they were filling a void mm -hmm. it was a free market kind of cultural yeah, sure. phenomena mm -hmm. and while it may not have been rule based if people didn't take that initiative, we yeah. just wouldn't have anything. Right, right, amen. So while we're trying to create, at least in some respects, a culture that is more structured, we also have to acknowledge that that was done by necessity, that it was good natured. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we're gonna put in a more rule or structure based system, 
that it's going to have to be slow and delicate because it, we really need to respect and take time to understand the existing relationships and uses and make sure that we don't cut anybody off. And if we gave someone something that we shouldn't have for a long time by accident, we, keep, we have to be reasonable about how you step back from that, if at all. And it just what you said really, that stuff jived with me. And I just want to make sure that, that Sean hears that because I think it's really hard to, as a, an employee to look at like a crazy mess. And it's a mess because it's just different people doing different things, which is great. And then coming up with a written document that doesn't offend or create problems, that's a, that's a very delicate, it's like writing a constitution for a new country. That's a delicate process. Well said. Um, it's on our list. I'll let you uh, make a determination of whether it's small, medium, or large. And you can fill that in for everybody and then we can prioritize from there. I think we have a basic structure of how it would move forward when it moves forward. All right. Um, before we move on from rec board, Mr. Bush, what are the other major items that the rec board is working on right now? Uh, well, we've been considering um, the plans for the renovation of the parking lot and uh, the park at uh, Sabine. That's something that we worked with um, KCBA on. I mean, we developed the long term park plan, um, and then after that, uh, KCBA came uh, to help us refine some of our proposals so we've been discussing um, those ideas um, and we've been spending some time talking about our role trying to figure out how we fit in with the new committee and, or the new committee structure who we should be <laughs> uh, reporting to um, but yeah I think the the park policy uh, that you've mentioned and the the renovations to the to the parking lot and park are, are two major issues right now. All right, thank you. So the reason I, I asked you to summarize that was so everyone can understand what that agenda is in terms of frequency of meeting, yeah. what our goals and expectations are, and we'll come back to this. Sure. Thank you. Um, public safety. Oh, sorry. Hi. Uh, we met last month, and the, as Cindy pointed out, there was a conversation about this uh, tax uh, credit for firefighters. We also had a conversation uh, regarding the CIP, and we meet again on April 13th, which is Wednesday, 8 o'clock in the morning. And did I say the 13th? I said April. April. See, the Wayback Machine is happening. Um, March, <laughs> I just jumped ahead of one. March uh, 13th, 8 o'clock in the morning in this building, and the agenda will be posted hopefully by the end of the week. That's it. Thank you. All right, infrastructure. Infrastructure, um, we had our our second infrastructure meeting in February, or was it our first? In any case, we had a meeting here on February 22nd um, with Mr. Harmon, Mr. Metric, and um, I just want to say that I had the most, the general um, impression that things are moving along really quickly um, in relationship to the work that the Public Works Group is doing and looking at um, the restoration and and uh, maintenance of signage throughout the borough, the parks and pl playgrounds, the streets, and um, and then a lot of infrastructure and issues that we don't ever see on a daily basis they're engaged on, um, both maintaining and repairing. Um, in addition, they're planning for future, um, you know, future projects at the same time. And um, it's just the, the the management structure is incredibly reassuring. I think the people of the borough should realize that um, we're in incredibly capable hands. Um, so, but there's a particular issue that the committee um, wanted actually to report to council on because we need your um, we need your help in providing further direction. So I'm just going to read, read kind of a statement of the committee right now. That'd be great. Okay, but listen, like you're going to help us with this. Okay. <laughs> um, the infrastructure meeting on the 22nd, council members discuss borough staff and borough Re Re recreation board recommendations on the maintenance of the Sabine Avenue Park and Playground. The scope of the work proposed that, that Fred just mentioned included playground enhancements, bathroom facilities, parking lot reconfiguration, lighting improvements, and sidewalk ADA upgrades. Currently, our 2019 comp improvement budget approves a narrower scope of work. 50K for sidewalk and ADA upgrades, 
parking lot milling and resurfacing, and 10,000 for playground improvements, a total of 60,000. The total final cost for the expanded scope of work that Fred made reference to, uh, the, the work that they did in partnership with the manager and KCPA, it's estimated to be greater than the capital improvement budget of $60,000, the scope approved by this, the, the, the budget. Right? The, committees, the, the infrastructure committee suggested reallocating some of the proposed new lighting um, in that plan to the pending borough-wide lighting project. And given the variables, the committee was not prepared to finalize a recommendation to the full council tonight. Um, and we asked Mr. Metric to provide the full council more budgetary details tonight. I mean, actually, in a, yeah, this is March, yes, tonight. We're hopeful that the full council can help us ask the right questions, provide further direction on that question of, like, you know, do we spend more than what's currently allocated in the CIP? Moreover, the committee went on to discuss the fact that given these variables and the unknowns, um, that we realize, we recognize that making a decision on anything, any Sabine Park expenditures, may not be wise in absence of a more comprehensive analysis of the whole 3.5 acre property. And the members of the Infrastructure Committee would like the Council to seek a proposal from some partner to help the borough in formulating a menu of potential options for the entire site, which meet criteria that include improving our park, and this is the goal of, we think is a common ground assumption that we would improve the park and the open space, maintain our income from the property, and continue to provide leasable commercial space to our existing tenants. And the committee's firm in our resolve to improve the Sabine Avenue Park, but also to explore alternative development schemes that might offer us the opportunity to improve the property, extricate the borough council, and the management from the commercial property management business. We, we, we think there's an opportunity here um, to look more broadly. And I just want to ask um, if other infrastructure committee members want to add to this, you know, tonight, if you want to add, to, if I got that right, that it represents our position as a committee. And this is kind of encapsulating the discussion that went on for about an hour. I want to thank you for putting that in writing because I think it really condenses a lot of parallel lines of thinking that have a lot of intersection points. Clearly, okay. Okay. I mean, I got it. Um, any council members' thoughts? Bob's looking for help here. Uh, well, so I'm not on infrastructure, but I, I think that you say line that uh, for me it's clear that's going to be a number one item for the for exactly these reasons. Um, because I'm uncomfortable spending more than we budgeted through CIP without a larger plan for the property. So. Um, I have mixed feelings. This is, this is still something I'm glad we're talking about. And I, I liked a lot of what he wrote. And it's, it's a discussion we have to have I guess my, my two concerns would be, one, given our less than stellar financial health, I just, I, we do need to generate money, but you did mention that as part of what you brought up, so that's good. So I guess just to cut down to my, my core concern with this would be, I mean, I, I think this is another example of like a cultural phenomenon. Over time, we got a building and we have tenants and it was a little ad hoc and here we are. And we have a property and we have a park and we have a lot of questions and we have maintenance bills coming. And it's, there's no easy answer, right? It's hard. And you have existing users. And I'm, I'm comfortable saying that my concerns are that... I want to make sure that whatever we do, this is me, I don't know who's with me or not, I want to protect and do everything possible to include the existing users to a certain extent. And these are the existing users that I've 
formed relationships with and talked to. And uh, the first would be our Montgomery Early Learning Center, which is our good uh, 20, 25 year, whatever, cornerstone tenant. And I think that if we can do something and it make every attempt to work with them and include them in that process, they like being in Narborough. 50 Narborough families like that they're here, including mine. If MELC wasn't here, uh, we, we probably wouldn't be here. And there's a nationwide daycare shortage. And MELC isn't just some mom and pop daycare or a corporate daycare. It's a nonprofit. It's Narborough's largest employer. It's absolutely the most diverse institution in Narborough. The majority of its employees are women. It's more than half, I think, of its employees are minorities. It's, it's a really useful asset. In fact, um, like the Montgomery County Commissioners, our state representative, our state senator, congressional candidates, they tour it all the time. Like, it's, if, if, if none of you at the table have in the last year or two, you should call them up and see what they do every day. Um, it's just, it's a valuable asset that we make money off of having a non-profit, quality, suitable child care facility run in Narberth. And like, I pay full freight, and part of my tuition's up for my daughter. And by the way, my daughter will long be in St. Margaret's land before we reach, this is not about my kid, but before we reach a decision here, but I think like, uh, people like me that pay full freight, subsidize care for maybe families that don't. I just think it's a good, valuable asset to the Narberth community, and I just want to see us make every effort to keep forming a symbiotic relationship that's a win-win for Narberth and MELC. Um, and then, and I'll try and be a little quicker because we have a lot on our agenda. But this this is a big deal. This is a this is a major decision. This is a number one, right? The, um, we have a food bank there um, that serves. Uh, the most vulnerable in our community and I, I think that we should do our best to try and work with them and friends of Sabine Park um, I know that they've what we do long term with the property I do know that we should try and do what we can for them now just because they've been waiting so long so we have this hodgepodge of interests that have formed because of our policy and just we we the, this government that we now represent created those interests. And I think that there's a lot of good and a lot of beauty that goes along on that property. And I just want to make sure that whatever we do, that we invest time understanding what goes on there now and make an effort to keep what's good in new plans going forward. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Everyone, because you're asking for guidance. So everyone who's not on the committee, I think, it's a complex issue. I understand all of what uh, Mr. Nixon said. Um, currently, and you know, we've just rented out the final open space, their uh, available space on that property, in the building. Um, everyone else in the building has re-upped their um, Lease. leases. Thank you. I lost the word. Leases. I think. Um, I know everyone's chomping at the bit for a good fun project at 201 Sabine. Um, and I understand, I understand that too. Um, because we own it, right? We own it. And so we could do something with it. But I think um, the point that plays on me over and over is the dollar amount. And um, I think that this is a long term project to understand the income that's there, replacing that income. I do understand the spending amount, some of those dollars. Um, obviously, we're approved to go forward for certain parts of, of um, upgrades and improvements because of the roof issues and other issues that were taking place in that, in that building uh, for MELC um, and others and, and other parts of the building, especially the ADA compliance. We understand that. I think that there is an opportunity, and it goes back to kind of the parks and rec piece, you know, we sat here and made this, had this conversation about KBCA coming in and giving us guidance and help with our parks, with our buildings, with what we owned. And all we've been discussing, and I've been waiting, and Fred knows this, and I've been talking to them about it, is that we have, have a whole conversation about 
tennis courts that aren't being addressed, bathrooms that are absolutely like horrible gas station bathrooms. We have, this is the most used piece and we haven't changed a piece of equipment. We, ha we cut down three trees that have not been replaced. We, this, we're, in my opinion, we're, in this, we're about to open spring season and no one has brought no one has brought the information forward about what changes are coming, what pieces are being, none of that has been addressed. And all we keep saying is 201, 201. I would really appreciate the same kind of focus on the larger park that serves the largest amount of people in the comp plan. It talks about exactly the percentages of people who use this park. And while I understand dollars are dollars, but I would really like it if we could focus on the piece that is the largest serving part park in the community. Could, could Mr. Metric address that though? Because I believe that that, that that is being addressed and we are focused on that. And, I, and so this is not this is not a I would sort of take exception to the I, fact that the, to the so, notion that this is a good fund project versus a dollar allocation because we're actually looking at it's it's the dollars that we are likely I'm okay, to spend. I just, may rephrase the question. May yeah. rephrase. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. Rephrase. So so what I'm saying is while I understand that there are exceptional maybe overages in the proposal of, of what's being put out most recently at 201, I understand that. And that, that you're saying, and we talked about this last month, that we're saying there are good things happening, but this report doesn't tell us what's happening in this park. This report doesn't tell us that, Bob. I need something, somebody has well, to say we, what's happening here. All right, let's say it's That's still, what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it doesn't mean it's not happening. There's a lot of things happening in the borough that, that we don't see happening. Because we, and we don't need to discuss them because they're being handled. And I would, so I'm I not would bringing up, and I, I'm not bringing up, we, the infrastructure committee's not bringing up items that are being handled. Otherwise, we'd be talking about everything under the sun that's being handled. 99% of what's taking place in the Broken Arbor is being handled very competently, as you know. And, and so we're not going to bring those so things you're not up. Gonna, so right. you're no, no, up is the, is the question where we need council guidance. Hold. Yeah. Hold. You read a statement. You asked yeah. for advice. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the council members not okay. on the committee have offered opinions. I'm going to offer you mine. We approved the CIP. It approved a certain number of dollars. Yeah. I think that's what we should, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that's what we should spend. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking in one of seven voices here. And I am not comfortable with spending more um, on sort of some grander plan. And I think we have spent a lot of time talking about 201 State Line and what its future should be. And I think we need to know that there is this grand alternative future or there is not. And that's why I support a um, request for proposals. If somebody is out there that has a vision for what that site could be in a public-private partnership, let's mm -hmm. see it. Let this council consider those options mm -hmm. and let's know this is a path we want to go on or it's not and we can be done with discussing it again and again. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. what I, mean. I think the infrastructure committee is actually good with spending the money in the CIP. Okay. It was it was being asked to approve plans that exceeded that expenditure that caused us to to kind of re-question okay. how do we make this decision if we're mm -hmm. we're not comfortable exceeding the CIP. We're okay with spending. I think, I think you've, you've heard yeah. some feedback. Okay. Yeah. I would like to chime in on that, though. I mean, we. I, I'd we, like to move this. I'd like well, to move no, this. Forward, this oh, well, no, you're not. No, I'm not. I'm not going to let this one go. Well, you, so you know, it's I'm not. actually not up to you, Jim, because I am the chair. This is. We can't have half discussions where everyone gets one comment on a major well, issue. The chair has public comment. I haven't done. She didn't get to talk at all. You're on the committee. Your comments were included in that summary. Cindy and you. Would anyone from the comment like to make, uh, anyone from the public like to make a comment? Mr. Bush. Yeah. All right. Um, I'd like to go back to the um, issue of the bridge. I know that you're grappling with some major long-term decisions about the bridge, but right now in the short term, there are a lot of people crossing over that bridge. I, I've been there two nights for two different activities. And every night I've seen several groups of people crossing the bridge. I saw a family with a stroller crossing. I've mm. seen groups of kids crossing. So, you know, if you decide to shut everything down, okay. But if you are going to continue to have traffic going through that bridge, um, I don't know if the mayor needs to, or the chief of police, I mean, there needs to be something more to keep people from crossing that bridge unsafely, which is what's going on right now. 
I don't know if that means signage or police officers sitting and telling people not to do it, but uh, what's there is not working right now and it's very unsafe. Thank you. Ms. Bizak. I guess I'll turn this on myself. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, on behalf of the Civic Association, I just want to let the public and council and the office and everyone know that on March 21st, while well, the Civic is hosting an event to celebrate the life of Victoria Donahoe, who passed away in November of last year, 89 years old. March 21st would have been her 90th birthday. So we're holding a really great event. Dennis Montagna is gonna be there giving you know, his famous presentations. And there's gonna be lots of people from all the different parts of Vicki's life there sharing stories about her. And then there'll be a time for anyone else in attendance to you know share a bit about Vicki as well um, so I invite everyone to come it's March 21st from 7 to 9 and it's in the um, west wing of the community library building so aka Girl Scout room so hopefully it'd be great to see some leadership there as well so I just invite everyone to attend thank you thank you um, Anyone else from the public? Hearing none. Let's move on to 7A. Councilor uh, Weisbord, can you make a motion? I have a motion. Um, I move the borough council approve the advertisement of draft Narberth Borough Comprehensive Plan and schedule a public hearing for Wednesday, April 17, 2019 at 7.30. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Let's talk about the comprehensive plan. Everyone got a really big document here today. Anyone want to start off? Well, you look at me, so I'll choose you. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I mean, so many members of the community participated in this process, and I know that the committee was expanded at one point, so I think that was a wise decision by council just to bring more people uh, into this process and for me I mean I'm a historian so this is this is the way I think I think in terms of decades and decades so um, I can see minor things that we would want to tweak I mean there, there are areas where I, w I wish we could drill down deeper but that's not really the nature of the of this piece so I'm, I'm trying to scale my expectations to match what, what this process is and um, but I'm happy to I'm happy to discuss it with, with <coughs> everyone here. Okay. Does anyone else have any more in depth comments or questions? Or are we comfortable advertising this draft? Absolutely. I think it's fine to advertise. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, sure. I was going to go to a motion about the bridge. Is that right? There you go. Um, I'd like to make a motion. I want to make a motion to support the question. Well, you can make a motion. We can put it on the table. Let's put it again. I'm going to make a motion and still want a question. I'd like to make a motion to close the Narberth Avenue Bridge pending soon to be inspection. An engineer's detailed, engineer's detailed, inspection. detailed inspection. Second. Can I, ask, can I start with the question? Yes, you sure can. Um, can I actually direct this to Chief Gallagher? I'd like to know if there would, in fact, be any concerns with getting to the south side if we were to close the Narberth Bridge um, to vehicular traffic. Now, now that we have East Winwood Road open, we have a, a different option or an alternative to get to the south side. As a matter of fact, if we have an emergency call on the south side, and my officers are coming off of the parking lot on the south of uh, right, right over here, we get to the south side quicker by actually going that way. So that would also be true for Norbert Ambulance as well. I don't know exactly know about fire apparatus, but I would like to think that in the bigger picture that their equipment would readily fit up the areas that we're going. When I'm out on patrol, I frequently go down through the south side through the access point of Wynwood. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I guess I just. I just you, you, can, you can the motion be let's just just specify we're close to vehi vehicles, right? Oh, yeah, it would I'm be sorry. open to pedestrians, bicycles, strollers, yeah. friendly amendment, friendly amendment, friendly amendment. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no,
You don't want it open to pedestrians because walking over, well, walking close to the car. Come over. Oh, I got it. Walking Thank you. Right. Sorry. No, not the sidewalks. But got anyway, it. They could still. Another friendly amendment. So, so, so let me just summarize and then yeah. Jim. The, the idea is to close it to vehicular traffic. Mm -hmm. The bridge would be open to pedestrians. The and uh, the sidewalk would, would be, remain closed. The sidewalks would remain closed. Yes. Okay. Jim. So why is it? It's we're closing it. What the discussion was, we're going to close it out of safety, out of an abundance of caution or caution. Staff says the recommendation is we don't need to close it to cars. We're going to close it to cars because we think it's a safety issue, but we think it's safe to walk over. I mean, if it's yeah. dangerous, shouldn't we just close it? It's I'm confused. Well, well, so you there, there are two, two kinds happens. of safety. You know, I think, I think there are two kinds of safety because part of what Fred is saying, and I, I see this too, it's, it, there are people walking, walking now that the sidewalks are closed, right. mm -hmm. and special people with strollers, mm -hmm. bicyclists. We have someone on the south side who uses a motorized wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And so there's no ADA way, you know, uh, into town unless you go t over to the tunnel, uh, the far tunnel. Yeah, the right. far tunnel. Which so, so, that, so that's why this would be, this would resolve that safety question. Yes. Not the structural question of the bridge, but... There, there's precedent for this. In the, the last time the bridge was declared a problem, mm -hmm. um, we closed the bridge. I think it was maybe six months mm -hmm. or so. And at that time, the bridge was open to pedestrian traffic, and it was it was considered hazardous for vehicles to use it because stuff was the vehicles created vibration, and mm -hmm. you know stuff would fall. And in fact, at that time, I think they even decided not to allow fire trucks to go over it any longer. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if they ever, I think they did used to go it's over. It's been a long time. It's been a long time, but, the, but even heavy trucks don't go over. And um, that was, there was, the, the council at that time had to vote on whether to not to repair the bridge. We actually, you know, there was an existential question. Do we want to maintain the bridge or just close it for good until we re can replace it? And the vote wasn't as closer than you think. It was, the vote was, was five to two. There were two members of council at that time who voted to leave the bridge permanently closed. Mm -hmm. And their thought was, well, it'll be a good space for pedestrians and bicyclists to use. And maybe it will incentivize, <laughs> yeah, you know, like faster movement at the federal and state level of getting the bridge done. Now, who, who knows whether, but I've often wondered if I voted the right way then, because I thought maybe... <laughs> Maybe there were the powers that be might have taken note that like we you know we just couldn't replace that bridge. Also, just a minor historical note, just for for perspective. The railroad was built by really 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 wealthy industrialists, and they paid for all those bridges up and down the main line and all across the country to be built. And they paid for the railroad, and they made a lot of money running the railroad. When they when that money. When the money ran, when they stopped making money, mm -hmm. they did a really nice thing for the public. They gifted the rail <laughs> system to the taxpayers. And they gifted the Narberth Bridges, the Rockland Avenue Bridge and the Narberth <laughs> Avenue Bridge to us <laughs> without leaving us an endowment <laughs> for perpetual maintenance of the bridge. So they made a lot of money <laughs> on the railroad and building this bridge. And they left us a broken bridge. <laughs> and now the taxpayers have to pay for it. And here we are. And I just think this is a, a, a lesson for our children about equity and... Um, well, is this a <laughs> yeah? Is this just a, so a is just this, a side point comment? <laughs> ahead, is this a a safety as in we think people are going to bike, walk, and or stroller over, irrespective of whether we close the sidewalk? So we're going to close it to traffic and open it to pedestrians for safety for that reason, or is this a is your concern? Like, what is your safety basis? Because I I misunderstood this at the beginning. My thought was, if staff saying it's safe, it's safe for cars, that's fine. That's one thing. It, is it? Is it? Or is it? Is it both? I, I'm because what I'm hearing now is that it's basically we're going to have pedestrians anyway, so we should close it and, and choose to put foot traffic over car traffic if we have to choose one. Is that? Is that the? I, I think there are multiple safety concerns. Yes. And 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 the thing the thing they have in common is that they're emergent. 
which is to say right. there's nothing we can do to address any of them now except what's proposed in this motion. So we have vehicles create vibrations and are heavy and are more likely to knock a piece of concrete onto a train before we can get the vertical support in if we don't close the bridge to traffic. Vehicles are heavy and make vibrations and are more likely to damage the bridge structurally to the point where it becomes a one before we can do anything about it unless we at least get a more detailed inspection, which I don't think we've had for quite a few months. I'm not sure that we ever got the actual last date. It was not last August, it was before that. So it's been quite some time since there's been a detailed structural inspection. Okay, and then three, yes, I think we've observed the pedestrians and people in wheelchairs and will take their strollers over the bridge and take their chances with the traffic uh, when they mm -hmm. find the sidewalks closed, that's an emergency. Yeah, the only way I think we curve. can address those things right now is to temporarily close it to traffic wait for the inspection report, see what we can do about reopening the sidewalks, see what temporary fixes there are. But for right now, I think like there are three convergent safety issues. So can we just, I, what's, or what's, Sean, what's your opinion as to the safety component of pedestrian traffic? Because pedestrians will presumably at least some, and I can, I've done this, I didn't do it today, but someone saying the sidewalk's closed, I'll just walk over the bridge. Does your assessment change at all? Because we have an issue where pedestrians will need to cross and then they may be in conflict with cars? They would be if they cross the bridge. There's only 20 and a half feet of cartway between mm -hmm. those two. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like walking down a two-way street in an arbor in the middle of the street. Right? Mm -hmm. Does that and change your recommendation at all? there are like no sight lines. That's right, yeah, it's, it's blind and a blind. Yeah, I just want you to think about this. You, this is your full-time job. I'm interested in your opinion. Um, uh, I think closure, closure is the, the least risk solution to the problem in front of us right now, meaning um, in practical in practical matters, persons persons are going to do what persons are going to do. They're going to cross. They're going to cross wherever they can cross. Um, you will get complaints about motorists having to get around town. You'll get complaints from the business community, which mm -hmm. hasn't had a voice in this process either, about accessibility to downtown. Um, closing it to vehicular traffic is the least you know the the least risky choice, I believe, in front of us. The, the but what, what, I'm sorry, I apologize. No, I, I just want, what's the recommendation? I, I really feel like Sean has answered your question I, in the way that he's comfortable I don't, answering. I, I, I don't think we should continue to press him to, to give an opinion. Michelle's statement, okay. know, Mr. Metric is not a structural engineer. We don't have one here to answer these questions, and I think one would be necessary to actually answer mm -hmm. your question. Can I add something Mr. for... Mr. West. And then just the logistics of it all. Um, while I appreciate the motion to close the bridge as I envision it, as I've walked over it countless times, most times running over it because it scares me. <laughs> um, let's talk about how we're going to close it. And if we have pedestrians, I'm looking at an image of the bridge now, if we have the, both pedestrian sidewalks closed, you all believe that every pedestrian will stay on the roadway and not explore the pedestrian walkways that are currently closed. What's going to be the mechanism to build a restraint to keep pedestrians off of the pedestrian access that's already failing? So while I appreciate... Mr. West makes my point. Like, I appreciate the motion, right? Don't we, don't we currently what have that problem? Right. Nothing, it's just a sign that says... It'd be very easy for a pedestrian to jump over that and explore mm -hmm. the pedestrian walkways mm -hmm. that are in question. Those are the ones that are failing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But what's blocking them now? I mean, there's, there's a do not enter <coughs> sidewalk okay, close so now. But you're saying someone logic, could jump over the railing. Right. If we so follow the logic, the yeah. right now we have them closed here. So mm -hmm. what are pedestrians and bicycles doing? Mm -hmm. Go down the Going down the middle of the road. Right. So we say, let's Washington close it for. I don't know. What do you think? You probably have to say that people aren't going <laughs> to be going <laughs> out onto <laughs> the pedestrian. Around, so and that's the danger. Right. They could be doing that now. They could be walking around the barrier and saying, I'm going to hop over the guardrail to the closed sidewalk that's no, well, yeah. a danger and live dangerously and walk. Well, I think 
I would suggest maybe what you're trying to say, Matt, is to just sort of issue a directive here at this table okay. that we're closing it mm -hmm. to really make that yes. true would require yes. a significant dollar investment in, in bollards and you know other yeah. things to uh, Jersey barriers mm -hmm. to close it, uh, it, not just sort of just an action at this table. There would be mm -hmm. dollars and logistics involved. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so in order to, I think one of the ways to address it is to possibly do a temporary action now uh, to, to close it, wait till the inspection. What happens when the inspection comes back and says it's still a number one, but we think the, it's, it's not a zero and that it's still safe for, it's not, it's, it's in tough condition, but it's still okay for traffic to, to, to go over. Blocking vehicular traffic, if those of you who were in the borough uh, at the time, if you recall, had a very, very detrimental uh, impact on the, on the downtown businesses. Uh, um, I, being on council at the time, I heard a lot from our downtown businesses. So it's not without, you know, it's detriment. The question is, uh, can we kill two birds with one stone by, uh, if they come back and say it's a one, and it is still okay for vehicles to go over, to make it a one way with a pedestrian lane for, for walkers to go through. Does that make more sense? If they come back and say, what happens after the next, if we, if we have after the inspection? So I think if we have an inspection that gives us, then we have up-to-date information that says it's still a one. Still a one. By that time, we may also have something that gives us more information about a solution for restoring one of the pedestrian sidewalks then that could possibly be an option that we don't have on the table now. And if not, then I think we could explore like a one-way solution. But I think we can't, we can't really make that decision now. We'll have to see what information comes in. I, I want to be really, I want to add a point of information to the conversation and it can kind of go both ways, but it's a point of information. Um, and I remember this from when we spent the money in 2011 to do the repair, right? Uh, many of the, the, the ones that you're seeing on the rating scale are a result of the bridge being what's classified as fracture critical. That means that the bridge as designed has no um, backup or secondary mechanisms mm -hmm. so that if any single member of that bridge were to fail, the bridge will come down. Now, that's terrifying. Yes. <laughs> that is how the bridge was designed. That sort of, any bridge of that design in any condition would receive that fracture critical uh, rating. Then on top of that, because they're assessing more criteria, sort of the general level of maintenance of the bridge, which we agree and know is quite poor. I just wanted to put that out there. That's the reason, that's the design of the bridge. I don't know if it helps anyone formulate an opinion. Um, so we're saying it's, it's a one by this is from This is from the National Highway administration, you know, fracture critical bridges that have from continued lack of maintenance to their structural integrity be rate, been rated by state agencies as structurally deficient uh, are at the highest level of risk since a failure of any element will trigger a failure mode. Uh, there you go. That's how engineers talk. So the other thing that could be in place by the time we meet next and have a more detailed engineering report would be the vertical supports so that that would be one less safety concern if we were to reopen the bridge to cars. I'm much. sorry, the vertical supports the vertical, what are the vertical the net. Net. Just, the net. What are they called the vertical line, something? Vert catchment. Catch whatever it is. But well, that's part of the danger is that the stuff will fall and hit a train. No, no, I understand what we're talking about. But that's not something that's going to happen in two weeks. No. So that's a piece that takes much longer. That's a separate it takes analysis. Weeks. I don't know, but in two weeks we'll have more information. Yes. One point to Matt's concern mm -hmm. um, from a liability <coughs> standpoint. If we close it to traffic and open it to pedestrians, mm -hmm. that's going to be cool for kids to go on. I think closed and means closed. You can right. walk. It, it would be really easy for a kid to go from the presumably pedestrian safe but closed off mm -hmm. street onto the beaten up boardwalk like sidewalk mm -hmm. where a kid could get killed. So if we're going to close it for safety, we should just close it. I think there's just just as much of a risk as somebody like think about it. if I was a 12 year old and the bridge was open to ride my bike over I'm gonna hang out on there with my friends and that that it would be really easy to climb over that really short portion onto the sidewalk it's dangerous 
Thank so you. We, so we've had a lot of discussion. Again, I don't think anyone's minds are changing here and in the interest of, of time and efficiency. Uh, more question. Uh, if, uh, ask your last question. No, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. You're right. Keep, keep going. Uh, okay. I'm ready for a vote. On. Whether this motion passes. And the motion is to is close it again? to vehicular traffic and then allow the car to be able people to, to walk and bike over. Pending yes. inspection. Pending inspection. I, I think I'm friendly, friendly amendment. amendment. Yes. <laughs> okay, <yeah. laughs> Now's the time. You do, it, you do yours. So, so friendly amendment uh, is that it would also be close to pedestrian traffic at this time. We know it's, uh, but if we're only waiting two weeks for a report or a week or whatever we get by Friday, that I think it's worth it to say close means close and not allow, to Mr. Nixon's point, in the exposure of the borough and the liability overall, I would suggest to you that close means close, and I would like I'm it to be closed. Mm -hmm. can, we, can we wait? Leave that one floating on the table. Okay. Thank you. Yours out there. So there's, yeah, no, I see that this is challenging because um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a real consideration for the businesses. They do, they do this business. On the other hand, the, the, the traffic count is like not intuitive. It, it's not, it's really high. It's a lot of cars yeah. use that bridge. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a lot more than any of us realize. I remember that from the, the traffic counts before. And so mm -hmm. there's a real peril for pedestrians using the bridge while vehicles are using the bridge. My friendly amendment would be exactly what Cindy said, but with the, under the condition that the pedestrians using the roadway will be protected from entering the area of the... Protected from vehicles from, entering. No, yeah. protected from, from using the, the, the sidewalk area. So that, I mean, that means we may have to rent, rent some fence or rent some barriers or or, 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 or have caution that's, tape that's, appropriate, that's you know, that the police, that's, that's you know, you know, some renting, <laughs> some, some chain link. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's an amendment, so if she's so not, that's it, my amendment. you can put that on. Now I'll go back to GJ. And leave it open to yeah. the pedestrians. So, so I, I understand the, no one has complained more about lack of ADA compliance in the borough. Um, um, I understand the ADA piece. I do. I, we, Northside, we have as well. The, the reality, unfortunately, is that I think Matt's point, and, and if there is that fencing, and if that, but I, I don't, if that's a solution, if the fencing is a solution, then I will withdraw my friendly amendment um, and allow some amount of foot traffic over as long as these larger pieces are then blocked off, I guess. Can we ask our director of public works his opinion on that plan? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Mr. Harmon, how are you? <laughs> You've heard some discussion here. Uh, I'm now seeking your professional opinion on the plan that is on the table. I'm going to leave it open. The easiest plan would be to close the entire bridge for pedestrians and vehicles. That would be the easiest method, requiring a less or fewer barricades. Uh, fewer uh, signage to <coughs> compromise and allow pedestrians to cross. Yes, you could provide barricades around the side sidewalk areas, um, and you still have to have vehicular barricades at either end uh, with signage. So it's a matter of what, what the direction the council wants to go to and through. To sweeten a little bit. Okay. Um, that Closing in here. If we do, if we do create the barriers such as Mr. Arm described, it would protect the, you know, the walkways. It would still allow a police car, the ability to traverse the bridge in the event of emergency. And there's no. You know, How would you do that? Because, because yeah. no, you yeah. can't. Yeah. No, I'm saying yeah. if you were, they could physically, but they're not yeah. going yeah. to. Yeah. Well, we with their lights and yeah. sirens on, they can score across. So you're saying close yeah. the whole thing in? What are you saying? Like 1979, travel. We would put a barricade up to the vehicle cannot pass through. Okay, that's fine. Okay, never mind. I'm just getting the nation stated. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask Mr. Venture to call the roll. Okay, I am making a motion to close the Narberth Bridge to vehicular traffic pending an inspection and secure closure of the sidewalk. Okay, say that inspection comes in Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, but say it does. We don't meet again for a week and a half. Do we need to review those results or 
is a non-zero grade enough to reopen this bridge? Well, is this going to happen for the I think meeting? we're rushing into a decision when we don't have to act. It's not emergent. I missed it. The motion's on the table. Um, I, I mean, can we put the... I think we, should, we can review it at our next meeting. We review it so at the next meeting. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Just making sure okay. for clarity. Do I need to read the room? No, you don't. Okay. Well, okay. Perfect. There's my motion. All right. Should, Mr. Metric, will then. you call the roll, please? Be, yeah. All in favor of closing the bridge to vehicular traffic and allowing pedestrians to pass with barriers to keep them off of the sidewalk area mm -hmm. and barriers to keep vehicles from entering. Uh, Weisbord? Aye. Uh, Ms. Riggers? Aye. Uh, Ms. Panadopoulos? Aye. Mr. Nixon? Nay. Uh, Mr. McGreevy? Yes, aye. You got four. Right. Keep going. Uh, Ms. Moffitt? Aye. And uh, President Muir? No. If I may, if I may, yes. ju uh, just to ease the um, this disruption that will happen as a result, I would ask that appropriate detour signs be set uh, set up in the appropriate areas uh, to direct people so they don't get to the stuff. There exists a detour plan, by the way, from the last mm -hmm. time yes. this happened. Okay. Yeah, at least that bridge is reopened on Whitworth. Okay. No, mm -hmm. so as we contact Lower Marion to make them aware. Of what's happening, and then Chief Gallagher contacts those in uh, law enforcement and in emergency services that they are aware of the detour going in place. The CAD will be updated, yes. Thank you. All right, um, informational announcements. Does anybody have anything? The leprechaun hunt is coming. The leprechaun, <laughs> the leprechaun hunt, and a thank you to the Civic Association who had their town potluck last week. Can really not to put you in the spot, but Mm -hmm. How and many people? Birthday. 150. Mm -hmm. Hundred, it's fabulous. Thank you. Fantastic. And a great cake. Um, <laughs> the great leprechaun hunt. I'm trying to get it. Like Saturday. No connect. Sunday. So <laughs> no, I got nothing. It's no, nice. Saturday. I can't get it. Saturday. I can't pull it up. Saturday. Mm -hmm. One to four. Um, I just want to add. It's the 16th. Uh, one to four. Yeah. Sea Everidge Way downtown in Narvith in the. Park. Okay. Have for that. Thank you. Uh, I don't like bagging this gavel. Uh, and I don't think um, I've ever had to do it before to the council rather than sort of members of the public. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I want, I, I work for all of you here at the head of this table. And I want you to understand that I'm trying to listen to lots of voices and I'm trying to balance those voices as best I can. One of the voices that I heard you all um, put forward at the beginning of the year was getting out of these meetings before 10.30, 11, 11.30 in the evening. And so when I get a sense sitting here at the head of the table that minds are made up and we're just sort of arguing with each other, it's just time to move on. The other is if we're talking about something that is sort of getting deep into committee business and there's no action on the table that really matters for this evening, I'm going to try and move us on, and I hope you all can understand that. Um, I've tried to encourage a conversational style. Sometimes people talk over each other. Sometimes people are talking at the same time. Um, I would really prefer a, a more informal conversational style where we really work to keep that in balance than a style where I have to on each word and nobody can speak and it's just very rigid. I think we are all smart people. We all know how to work professionally together. I think we can do it. Um, if you feel like for whatever reason that uh, you had less time or less opportunity than someone else, I would really encourage you to come speak to me afterwards. Um, and I will, uh, you know, I'm only human, but I'll do the best job that I can. I really try to work for each of you equally. So, um, I'll take a motion for adjournment and then we'll Take five minutes and we'll go into executive session. I so move. Let me adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.